Hello and welcome to Season 4, Episode 19 of Supercoach Saw playing. GMI excited for this one, lads. We've got George on this week. We've been wanting to get on for, for a long time. We had the community podcast last week, which was, I think that's probably the longest Supercoach podcast in in history. Ticked well over three hours, so um, that was really awesome. So in future, we're going to be getting a few guests on as as the trade sort of died down and, and the relevance dies down, we're, we're going to try and get a few more people coming onto the potty and, and none better than this bloke. Be, um, before I get into uh, my two brothers, my two co-hosts, I'll, um, I'll ask you, George, how, how you going, mate? I think we, a lot of us know how you're going. I, I never miss a, miss a round of you. Always look forward to that Monday morning before work. It's, it's a tough time of the week when you've got to – Get back into reality, and um, yeah, it's a really nice way to start the week. So, Legend, how are you? Good, Spills. Great to be on. Uh, yeah, great, great to be here. I had to laugh uh, when you guys were starting the podcast. It's like cause obviously I'm on the FTB podcast, and at the start of the pod, we usually try and decide who hosts, and they're like, "Who wants to host?" <laughs> Awkward silence. I hosted last week. It's exactly the same thing happened with you guys. So I found that quite amusing. Oh, mate. But, it's good to be oh. here. Um, love, love your podcast, boys. Love your work this year and flying this year um, with the podcast and your ranks as well. So, uh, yeah, taking a big step up for you guys this year. So, yeah, very happy to be on. So, thanks for having me. Thanks, Ross. Thank you, mate. No, I appreciate you having you on. It's it, it is a funny one because like I didn't I didn't know I was hosting until about three minutes ago, and I've I absolutely butchered the first take. So <laughs> that's exactly like that and. I'm glad tell to hear us, it's like still, that. The... Tell, tell us what you did, mate. Come on, let's just put yeah, it out so, in the open, mate. Tell us what so you did. George, Come on. So Come George is just like, look, don't just don't introduce me as a goat. And what do I do? <laughs> I say we've got the goat on today, and he's like, Spills. Spills I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, mate. I've I bullied him on our own podcast. You know, we're supposed to be looking after our guests, but uh, it is what it is. Probably should have just ran with it, but um, uh, it's just whatever. At the end of the day, but <laughs> yeah, you can't get it I'll all right. Out there, but... No, you didn't. Good. <laughs> no, you're right, mate. As we said off air, you know, it's our podcast, but it's your episode. So, you know, we want to look after oh, you. That, that's man. great, mate. That's, um, awesome, mate. that's cute. DR, you've had a, a an absolute howl. And not super coach, but um, your phone. You, talk us through the situation with your, your phone and, and how everything's been going. And, yeah, how you doing, oh, brother? Mate, it, it, a howler on, on both and super coach wise as well, mate. But, Riv's got this obsession yeah. with this little portable speaker and he carries it around everywhere, but you've got to have your phone on with the music to actually play through the speaker and all the rest. So lately I've been yeah. trusting a little bit more with the phone, but uh, you must have been listening to some Slipknot or something. I'm not too sure. Got a little bit aggressive there. Went went with a big throw and uh, she, she's gone, mate. I tell you what, not good at the moment. So running without a phone for now, but uh, super coach wise, mate, we'll talk about that in a sec. Yep. Yeah. Red arrows this week, mate. Unfortunately, yeah. but uh, Janeth, how are you going, my man? How are things? Carlton looking okay at the moment, oh. mate. Sitting second and third, our teams respectively. Spills won't mention how Essendon are going. George, mate, I wasn't, I was never that. gonna mention them. Was never gonna mention them. That's yeah. up to you, boy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that is how you travel, brother. Yeah, yeah, going okay. It was a good, was a good weekend. I mean, I've seen prettier wins, but sometimes you just gotta win. It's pretty funny. I was, so I, my my member seats in the near the cheer squad. I took an I took my North mate into the cheer squad, um, and every single time North kicked a goal, I reckon you could distinguish where we are on the TV because he's the only one standing up. <laughs> he wasn't like that guy. He wasn't that guy. Absolutely mouthing <laughs> off. Did you see that? No, by the way, I I did, did. Did. it was not that guy. Yeah. Not him. <laughs> not him, buddy. Was it? He was a good sport about it. It was a good sport. Yep. Um. Kudos to him, but yeah, it was a good weekend. Super coach wise, I think we got red arrows across the board here. Yeah, uh, so I reckon we crack into that. Yeah, we'll we'll get stuck in a super coach and um and also George, well done to your um your crowies for getting the job done. Just way too good, and um that's what happens when you you play safe in the last two minutes. You you pay the price. So yeah, always always had a feeling that that you would pinch that one. Um, so yeah. So two hundred eighty-five dollars raised for the Good Friday appeal, and obviously five dollars is five dollars or not? Yeah, five dollars every beanie purchase goes straight to the Good Friday appeal, which is a, an unbelievable cause and it's something that we really enjoy doing on the podcast. So I uh, thank you to everyone that that buys thank that bought, has bought a beanie. I think we're sold out now. 
uh, yeah, we've we've got to order more and and well, yeah, yeah officially sold out and, and we do. Yeah, and we do have a new batch coming, so stay tuned for that. DR will, will definitely reveal that later on in the potty, so that'll be exciting. But, yeah, really awesome stuff here, boys. It's good to see that gradually going up throughout the weeks. And and uh, how could we also forget our um, a major sponsor of the, of the podcast, Speedy Tees. Yeah, just all sorts of merch. They they do a great job, and, and they really look after uh, after our merch line. So, yeah, can't thank them enough for the, the stuff that they do for us. And... Yeah, we we always always happy to shout them out every week on the potty. So, yeah, really, Absolutely. really, really awesome stuff, boys. Um, just uh, yeah, they're, they're based, just just next to Trackside, actually in Kilmore. So, very famous racing track there near Kilmore. There but uh, Janice, yeah. should I give a bit, a bit of a teaser here? I, re- mate, I reckon. What do you reckon? Now's the, it's like yeah. now's the time. Yeah, good time. it's probably a good time. I, I would, yep. I would be actually wearing this myself at the moment, but I don't want to be the only one without my two brothers. They're currently in the post on the oh, way mate. up to uh, Spilsey and Janeth, but we do have, lads, the tees and the hoodies. They have arrived. So there we go there. There's the front there. Nice and nice and big on the logo as well. Yeah. Very fine there. And then you see the, uh, the awesome work from our man, AFL Doodles. There's the three of us on the back there. I'm probably yeah, absolutely okay. butchering this. But I'll tell you what, boys, with the, the cold winters and the cold winds at the moment, I know lots of people already got onto uh, one of those beanies, but get a hoodie as well or a T-shirt if you're someone that has no sense and just doesn't feel the cold like my two sons. Every day I'm saying put some pants on, put a jumper on, shorts and T-shirts, bugger off, Dad. Uh, yeah, no brains, mate. Uh, they, they take after their mother, I think. So um, she doesn't watch the oh. pod. I can get away with that. A little drive by the lease. Uh, but, yeah, Taylor and the crew there at Kilmore, they've certainly looked after us. They'll look after you as well. So uh, make sure you uh, log on to Speedy Tees and check out their great work. Thank Spills you very it. much, Speedy Tees. Um, round reviews. Oh, oh, I may as, well, may as well quickly quickly kick us off on the first one there. So I'm, I'm really disappointed with this. I know it might not look too bad, but it's just one of those what could have been type situations and – I thought I planned really well in terms of, of captains and every it's every one sort of just tipped over a little bit. I had the VC on butters, so you know I was like, oh, that's a that's a really nice bullet dodge. But so, this is the this is the disadvantage of the captaincy loophole, and and sometimes boys it, it just doesn't go your way. So yeah, I, what did I do? I didn't roll the dice on on Sarong, who had a pretty good matchup. I rolled the dice on Neil, who had a terrible matchup, but. Yeah, it's, it's it's another one where you do get sucked into his previous scoring history, but you also you forget how good Sydney's midfield actually is, and he just went missing for a quarter and a half. So, yeah, really frustrating. So that was a that was a big miss, and then and then yeah, Simpkins obviously pulled out a sixty something odd score, which was also super disappointing. But he did start the game really good, so I was pretty optimistic. I think he was on about. Oh, he's pushing 50 at half time, so he was, he was on track for a ton, but really slowed up, slowed, slowed down in the back yeah. half. But on Saturday night, I'm looking at my team going, I'm on fire here. I think I was leading every single one of my legs, and I'm and I'm thinking this trade, this almighty trade. I'm not I wasn't happy to to burn my last trade, but you know, when that trade involves getting Matt Rao to Connor Rose, I, I consider that as a massive win until you know, until it backfires, so bad, but you know, Rouse just punched out. Oh, I want to say, was it, 50, what was it, DR? 50, 50 points? 51. Oh, around a 50, 51. wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah so, that's, so that's that's more than double from Rose. Uh, so, yeah, Matt Rouse is one of those ones where if you didn't trade him this week, you probably stuck with him for the rest of the season because with the cash gen I had, it was, it was about 110K in the bank. So I wouldn't have been able to afford anybody like this type, like now. But yeah, had Rose and yeah, no trades left, boys, as you can see there, and and like twenty six k in the bank. So, look, I think fully fit. The team looks really good, but yeah, I wish I could go back and and hold a few of those players that we traded out, and that's another discussion for later on. But other than that, boys, everything went really well. But two real massive red flags in a week. Just so it's going to be interesting to see what sort of, but who gets up this week? I think Gorn's a test and. I think Rosie might be a test as well. And there's a couple of players that I dodged in particular. I think Dawson was one of them. There's a few others. So it could be worse. I think Yo will be back. So scored, yeah, scored 
this two th- two thousand three hundred sixteen with uh, with two premiums on the bench. So yeah, really good cover with Jones and Dowling. So yeah, it come in a good week for me. So I th- it could have been a lot worse. Uh, just yeah, it could have been better as well with the captaincy. So that was my biggest frustration. Dr. Legend, um, what about yourself, mate? Talk us through for the week you had because um yeah, obviously. Oh. This one, yeah, a bit frustrating. Yeah, a tough week, mate. It's t- so I've been seeing lots yeah. of green arrows lately. And when you get used to the green arrows, when you finally see a bad red one, it really, really hurts. But look, 2275 for me. I've got a feeling I may have played a little bit too cautious here. So decided to keep on to Yo. I've held Gorn for the last couple of weeks. Decided to hold Fisher as well. And I'm thinking... Well, look, even though I lost out a little bit this week, having those two trades in the bank may actually be a bigger advantage to me come last maybe two, three weeks of the season uh, when potentially we have some uh, premiums that are rested. Uh, You know, do they rest a Grundy? I'm not too sure if the Swans are flying, if they've locked in that top spot. You know, we know what injuries happen towards the end of the season. Look what happened with Dacos last year. That really hurt some coaches. So I've taken a little bit of a hit this week in order to preserve those trades for later on in the season. I know that the season is coming to an absolute halt, but I think you can make up a lot of ground in the last two to three weeks. Butchered my captain as well. I uh, was always going butters into Sarong, got scared off. Somehow end up with Luke Ryan. How? I'm not too sure. After having butters as vice captain, I was just yeah, right. waiting, waiting, waiting. You know, I got to the Brisbane-Sydney game. It's like Chalky, Heaney, no, no, no. Then you just got to run with someone. So panicked a little bit, but uh, hopefully can bounce back this week. But, you know, Caldwell, Dogger, Rosie, Yo, Gorn, all under injury clouds. I'm hoping, fingers yeah. crossed, they can all get up this week. But if not, maybe in a little bit of trouble. And those two trades may become an absolute zero very, very soon, mate. But uh, 710 for season rank, still okay. But uh, not really want to, where I want to be at at this point. Janeth, my man. You are leading the pod this week and obviously leading the season rank there, mate, with a 432. Tell us about your week, brother. I think it's the first time in in quite a while I've been top of the pod, actually, because you boys have been absolutely flying. This might, and I say this in the best way possible, but it's, we we had a shocker this week, boys. Like, yep, I'm top did. of the pod here yep. with a top 11 rank score, top 11% rank score. It was just... Yeah. We were saying last week, Dio, was at the end of our potty, when was the last time that we nailed a 140 captain? A lot. And right now, I would take 120. I'd take a 120 in a heartbeat. Yep. Because since the Zorko, uh, VC Merritt was looking great. If he probably hits Martin, lace out 40 metres in front, Martin kicks the goal, Merritt gets the goal assist. They both get 120. Happy days, right? But it's those small sort of plays and then... But as captain, oh, it's just like it's so hard to recover from a from yeah. a poor captain. Um, Billy Dowling again came up clutch. Look, holding Gov and Gorn and only fall only fall into four thirty two lowest rank uh, lowest season rank since round nine. So this is wow. This is like ten weeks now, but still, I think got that trade left. Hopefully, can can make late season resurgence, especially with some of the injuries we've seen. Now, dodge a little bit of carnage. Let's hope. Um, but yeah, just just an absolute. I think it was a really tough week because we just can't nail a captaincy. Just yeah. for the, like there was no popular captaincy options that really went off, except for Sarong. But then you you start doubting, or does a Neil Bull and go to him? And it's just these things finding a bulletproof matchup is just so difficult to really target as a captain and yeah we, we, if we get one we just have to take it if you get it if they had a 120 just take that with both hands because it's pretty rare yep. at the moment with everything going on with the carnage and everything it seems yeah. like if you know it, it's almost too good to be true a really good captaincy matchup it, they just yeah. haven't worked have they Something lately happens. the ones that we just um, think here we go lock it in throw it away the key we won't even need to use a captain whatever mm. just been failing and does that mean that we simply lock in sam flanders each week has honestly, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not against it. Eh? It's, not a tough, against it at all. it's another tough week for captains, so like I wouldn't rule yeah, out that. I was saying, my round review, so very, yeah, yeah, I was saying very quickly, my round review that my um, you know, VC threshold, if you may, it's coming down. You know, that old 125 plus rule 
is going down, down, and I wouldn't be you know too disappointed with a one fifteen or one twenty as you mentioned, Janet. So, yeah, yeah, interesting times when it comes to the captain VC, and it can give you such a leg up. You know, Sarong yeah. over Butters last week. Those extra points, if you're getting at the pointy end of the overall rankings, can make a big, big difference. So, uh, yeah, for sure. yeah, not yeah. the best of week, boys. But yeah. uh, top of the pod, won't be any surprise that Janice still yeah. there, as we said, 432, 710 for me. 2901 for you, Spilsy. You are coming home with a very wet sail, my friend. A very wet sail. Yeah, and don't think we've forgot about you, George. We've been rambling for the last 10 minutes or so, but this is an opportunity for yourself to not only run us through your week like we have, but also your season as well. I mean, if, if those who are watching have been living under a rock and, and don't tune into your YouTube channel on a regular basis, you can fill them in. But how, how's your season going, man? And and what are you what are you looking to do to sort, sort towards finals? How's the... How's the how's the depth going? And yeah, run us through your, your season, your plans moving forward, man. Yes, uh, this week uh, did all right. I think twenty four thirty eight. Oh, I've got on the screen. <laughs> Thanks for that. But like decent week. Um, just got Dawson injury, and then a few one weekers. Like um, I think Cordwell's are fine, and then Jackson. Rosie a bit sore and stuff like that. So should be all right. Um, just got Philippu on the bench. Uh, unfortunately, he got injured, but he was sort of my cover oh, player, and that was my yeah. second to last trade. And then, uh, a bit like you, Spills, the the handicap of having Rao at, at M eight has been something else. It's like it's we're fielding worst. a bad rookie, not even a good rookie. That's the worst. <laughs> it's been. Um... I, I, you wish share the same frustration. I, I guarantee you, it's it's been. Yeah. I watched your video. I'm with you. It's probably the worst ever trading I've ever had, and I think you would agree, surely. Yeah, especially like you boys have like a Neil or a, or a Dunkley and watching them put 80 points, 60 points a week on Rao, I'm just like, oh, my Not God, like, you can't George. climb with this. Yeah. <laughs> Not this week. They, they were all rookies yeah. this week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, was, I, I needed that relief so to <laughs> not have to stare down on 130 or 140 because I feel like they can do that any given week. But, yeah, yeah like no, Neil tag by Parker. Like, even like you guys were saying with captains and stuff, I think I captain two 80s because I got greedy, like I didn't take 110 VCs and um, like Sarong, I captain Sarong got, gets tagged by Richmond. So like it was hard to, you know, with a nil ball and threat yeah, to do that. But I'm, I'm with you guys. I think I'll be taking soft captains at the moment. Um, I was pretty close to captaining Heaney. I was switching between Heaney and Gordon. Could have been another bad one, but um, yeah, just take, yeah, take 115 at this point. But I guess if, Depends on the matchup as well, but um, see how that goes. But yeah, season's gone are like okay. Um, I think oh, going to the season, just wanted to give myself a good chance. I wanted to get off to a good start. Started playing a bit more AFLW, um, bit of NFL sports deck, bit of BBL. I don't really watch. I don't have a, a good understanding of BBL or, or NFL really, but I gave it a crack and more about finding like value in the starting team and you know like picking like you know good plays. Some fit like. Not paying overs like fair price for a few, just with like good quality, durable sort of plays, and yeah, a lot of value elsewhere. Nailing all the right rookies, so I wanted to get a bit of practice in other formats to get off to a good start. Because the goal this year was just to be in contention for first, not not to be. Unfortunately, I think overpaying has hurt. I held a few rookies too much, um, too long, like a Wilson and a I think Matt Roberts. I think their parting gifts were like a thirty and a and a twenty five, which I fielded. I think so. Those were a little bit rough, but. Um, uh, look, a bit like every year, like a few good lessons, but sometimes you learn some things from a few years ago and then you forget and you repeat them this year, like paying. I'll tell you what, I think half my premiums I've paid over 600 for, and it's, uh, yeah, it's yeah. been a disaster, really. Um, but yeah, I think the season's like it's gone okay, rank seven, seven, four. Where I finish from here is very much in the hands of the super coach gods, as you say, DR. So I'm one, I'm zero <laughs> trades because. I think I had five trades out of the buy, and then Sexton, Fisher, and um, Rao just unfieldable at this point, really. So fix that up. But um, yeah, would like yeah, they gave us forty trades, and I was I was whinging it was too much, and I've run out with six weeks to go. So <laughs> maybe I should uh, uh, be a little bit more grateful there. But yeah, regardless, yeah. Uh, having a, a decent season, like you take hopefully top one k, but one injury, and I'm I think yeah, probably not going to make it. But we'll see how we go. 
Yeah, you've had a great season, man. Like, I know it's been pretty annoying short term, but like, well, I think a lot of the community have a lot of respect for you in particular is because you're just so consistent. I mean, it's almost every year we're looking at a three digit rank. It's, it's a stage vu from last year and the year, year before. And I know, I know 2018, 90, et cetera. It's always just been a really consistent finish. So like, yeah, the great man always finds a way. And I think, yeah, I think we'll, we'll bounce back in the, in the second half of the year. And really happy that you've gotten rid of Rao. Cause yeah, myself and you deserve a lot better than that. And <laughs> I think everybody else who, everybody else who, I don't, DR and Jav, they don't know what it feels like. They, they've been bagging me every single week about it, but I'm telling you, like, they're like, Spills, don't trade him. Don't don't burn your last trade. Why Spills, not? Spills, you got, you've given me a birthday gift idea for you. All right. I'm going to get to your personalised Vimeo from Matt Rail himself. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm not copping it. I'm not oh. <laughs> no. oh, Actually, hang oh. on. Hang on. I need, I need to actually have a think about this. I would i got some words for Rowley. Uh, yeah, I, I'm all for it. <laughs> you can send one back the other way. <laughs> hey, hey, Rowley, Spilsy, Supercoach YouTuber oh. here. Well, it, yeah, if if, um, if Rowley was listening to Dwayne's World the other day, Bruce and Kilmore rang in. and uh, <laughs> They did. Apparently yeah. this, this man spills his on Essendon's radar. That's just what I've heard anyway. Rumours <laughs> from Bruce and Kilmore who rang in Mate, at SEM. That vision, wow, that was funny. Spills. I reckon me and you should get matching Rowley. T-shirts from Speedy Tees or something. Rail owner 2024. Like we can, if we can sit through this, we can sit through anything. Something like that. That's such George, a good shout, George, man. Can you get the punching bag out again? Can we, oh. can we get the punching bag out? That's uh, out. Yeah, I might have to print it. <laughs> poor Rail. I think he, he must be injured. The poor guy. I, I can't believe. Will, uh, so it's got to be. So, he's got to be carrying something like let me let me ask you this one george if, if you had have held for one more week and you cop that 51 on field would the would you be opening the liquor cabinet again mate for your review <laughs> oh, <laughs> i don't know maybe I, I just got a new computer screen so maybe i can do something to the old one put a knee through it or something but i don't know well, i'll tell you what mate i wouldn't have been far far from you and and that, yeah, I've been ranting about Rao all year, but enough of that. It's time for DR to rant about, I don't know what he's ranting about here. He'll, he'll fill us in, but DR Legend, what have you got for us tonight, mate? Oh, we're going to go very quickly on this. And I think that basically all of us are in the same position at the moment. Now, how exciting is it? And our, our overall goal is to get to full primo as quick as possible. And it seems like every bloody year, as soon as we get to full primo, we can't actually field a full primo team because of the carnage that inevitably happens each year. And it seems around this time of the year, that's when we really, really start to hurt. So Spilsy, I know you're in the same boat, mate. Elliot Yo and Max Gorn were both yeah. carrying these two blokes last week. And when other blokes have got, you know, your Tim English there, and that's good and bad, depending on what, what week you talk about. If we look back to last week, you've got your Tim English there and even a Dan Houston or well, Jack Sinclair, even better. We are really, really losing out here, mate. And, hey, my 23rd primo is Zach Bloody Fisher. So I no longer have a 23rd primo. I've got an absolute dud sitting there. You probably won't even get selected this week. But, boys, how frustrating is it when you can't yeah. field your optimal side? And, you, oh, hey, terrible. big shout-out to Billy Dowling and the Sean Manor types and the Humphrey types. I've been doing yeah. their job very, very, very well. So big shout-out to these blokes. But at the end of the day... You know, they're not the type of quality that we actually want to be playing on field at this stage of the year. So that's just my rant, mate. You know, bugger, look, I love the super coach gods sometimes, as George just said, but I'm hating them now because they are just taking my players and they're teasing us, boys. Like, what's going to happen with Dogger, Rosie, Caldwell? They're teasing us. We can't lock in any plans. We can't do anything at the moment until team sheets come through. So I have some good news for you, please. Oh, give us some good news, Janeth. Give us some good news. No Caldwell, no Jackson, no Rosie on the injury report. Nice. That's good. That's awesome. I knew, I knew Jai would be fine because he actually Unless passed that concussion it. test. So he just – it happened so late. So they sort of just ruled him out. But I think he was the big fine. big one was and, Jackson with the ice, wasn't it? Yeah, that did not look good. Um, I'll, We'll move on. Um, I know I'm hosting tonight, but uh, again, I'm absolutely – Bamboozled. I might have to handball this one back to DR. DR, uh, what's what's going on here, man? Can, what, talk us through it. What have we got here? Look, mate, I'm I'm not big on the Hollywood scene, as you'd probably guess. 
But who I've got now, it's not bloody Beyonce. Who is it? I was asking George. It's not, it's J Lo. It's J Lo. It's not Beyonce. Sorry, Beyonce. But I we've got J Lo and yeah. Ben Affleck here. <laughs> <laughs> Two Hollywood stars that um, broke up, but then I'm, I'm assuming, I'm hoping, and now back <laughs> together. <laughs> and, well, I don't know. I don't follow this team. I don't know why I haven't included them there. I shouldn't have even done it. But oh, I did. Just wait to the graphic here, boys. The quality graphics that we've got here in the Sword Play Potty. But uh, th there's five blokes on the screen that I do have here. And I'm sure that there could be many others, depending on your personal situations. But I've got Brody Grundy, Zach Fisher, Nick Martin, Hayden Young, and young Cole McKercher. All there on the screen. And I'm guilty so far of hooking up with some of my exes, Brody, Fish, and Nick Martin. So blokes that I started with, and then I've traded out, and then I've bought back in. In McKercher's case, if I bring him in this week, it's even worse because I didn't start McKercher. I traded him in, obviously traded him out, and then I'll be trading him back in again. So I've actually used an extra one because I didn't start with this man here. But, boys, how many are we guilty of? How many of our exes have we crawled back to – this year currently it's three for me as i said grundy the fish and nick martin janice how many have you crawled back to this year mate and more importantly do you think it's actually been beneficial to hook up with the ex or <laughs> would you take everything back again and uh just stick on the path I'll, I'll, I'll say three almost four uh, i'll say why almost four fisher <laughs> Fish is Fisher started him, got rid of him, brought him back in, got rid of him again <laughs> for another one of the exes for McKercher. So started McKercher. Oh, didn't that's a get bit rid of, of him the first time. A triangle. <laughs> so got the <laughs> got the one twenty and the one thirty. Got injured, got the injury, traded him and brought him in a couple of weeks ago. And then Nicky Martin traded him out early in the season, brought him in. I reckon in the week that everyone brought him back in. Uh, and the one that was almost was Rankin, and that would that would have been that would have been genuinely why you shouldn't be doing this. So bring him in, gets injured that week, trade him out, almost bring him in again, almost get suspended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. That's how to get on the never again list. But yeah. look, I don't think any of these have sort of set the world on fire. I think there's a reason why we trade them out in the first place. Grundy's probably the one that sort of got away. I think not not yeah. sort of like rubbing it um, in or anything, George, but like I genuinely want to know how you went about, like how you feel now about the trade, like the sideways English to Grundy and how you feel about it. But like not going without Grundy is probably better than English, um, but not going back to him hasn't been the end of the world, hasn't sort of ruined the season or anything like that. So, yeah, I'll, Net lesson for next year: Don't do this. Just, just if you yeah. trade it out of play, just back them in. But also be willing to swallow the ego if there is real, like a real reason to bring them back in as well. Spilsy, yeah. Spilsy. How many, mate? Four boys. Four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you player. You player. <laughs> Who's the four? Hook it up. Hook it. Oh, so yes, yeah, started started Colby McCurcher. Uh, trade him out when he when he maxed oh, and he I think he maxed I'm pretty sure he come back he had an injury yeah. or something. Uh, yeah. got him in for oh it might have been 300k yeah it was 300k. He yeah, scored okay. really well on debut again. Uh, he was and he turned up actually and then he was sitting at 380 for so long, and yeah I, I knew he was going to be out for a long time. He extended the injury it was a, it was a dodgy one so yeah I just cut me losses and took took the quick cash grab so he's one where i didn't really mind too much because i'd already almost maxed him and he was really good again so it's just unfortunate really that he that he couldn't stay on the park uh hayden young so yeah got got rid of him once and then that's it so he's the one guy on this list that didn't come back into the side nick martin he was the big one so yeah really really idiotic to be honest i don't know what myself and a lot of people were thinking when we decided everyone here, everyone here man yeah like the the scoring was bad the disposal efficiency was terrible 
But the role was great, and he was playing off half back. He was still racking it up. So it was one of those ones where you probably just wait and see what he does next week. And if he cleans up his disposal by, you know, fifteen or twenty percent, he's probably going to ton up. So really ignorant from yeah, all of us here to be like to be honest, it, it was a howler. So having him at D six is fine, but that's two trades that I wish I had back. And yeah, Zach Fisher was another one. Yes, yeah, started him. Uh, we all know what happened. Uh, absolute horror show. And then. I, I went to Essendon, North Melbourne, round 10 with with DR, and we did catch up with George as well. So I'll bring that one up quickly. But we we just we watched on and saw Fisher take kick in after kick in and step out of goal, the goal square every single time. I think, far out, we got to get this bloke back in our side. I mean, he, he's going to be good. And, yeah, he got injured. So, yeah, I got, trade him back in, and then now he's out again, like you, Janeth. And then... Yeah, Grundy was the other one. So, yeah, got got rid of him for – I reckon it was Jordan Sweet. I reckon we jumped on – I definitely think yeah. I'd jump on Sweet and then, um, yeah, ran ran a bit of a dodgy R2 for a while and then, yeah, obviously grabbed Grundy uh, about a month ago. So, yeah, Young's the only one that didn't come back into the side and now I own two of these five. But I think, yeah, a massive lesson learned. I think you just – I'm happy to pay up for for big dogs, knowing that I'm going to hold them for the whole season. You know, not these unproven guys where, you know, it's 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 good. It's one thing to have the role, boys, but whether they've done it in the past and 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 produced a sustainable brand of scoring, which like Fisher, no Martin, no Young was really good for a month last year, that which sort of sucked us in a bit, but. For a whole season, no. And, yeah, obviously, McCurch being a first-year player. Grundy's the only real one. So, yeah, that's a big lesson, boys. And that's got a lot to do with why I've got no trades left and 22 premiums. So, very frustrating. Uh, George, how many of the big five did you – how many of the Xs did you get back with, I should say, in this segment? But I've essentially burnt as – just to make it clear. What? How, how about yourself, mate? Who, who have you owned here and who have you got back in? Uh, just the three. Uh, yep. I was so smart to not start McKercher to avoid this debacle. Um, yeah. I should have got punished way worse for that. But <laughs> you're on the very <laughs> trade. 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 I can't believe that. I, that oh. yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, how does that happen? Right. Yeah. yeah, probably crouch injuries probably helped him a lot there. But um, I, I'm a bit biased, like, you were saying before, Janeth, um, I did English to Grundy. I was going to get a donut that round if I didn't do the trade, but at the same time, I really hated watching English. Just like not as super competitive in the hitouts. No, He's lost every hitout. But, but I think people can see, maybe people see that differently and a bit biased. Um, so like, for example, like Jack Steele, like I love Jack Steele. Oh, Didn't care of all the crap that I've owned him two years straight. And he's been awful <laughs> for two years, but I still started him because he's one of my favorite players. I did trade him as soon as the, the knee inj- the uh, report of the knee injury was enough to <laughs> make me jump ship. But um, yeah. yeah, I'm a bit biased for that trade. So we'll see uh, a lot of the, um, a lot of these rock matchups are, or like a lot of it's matchup dependent, um, especially uh, it seems to be this year is, and people are a bit more aware of like ground and and with the new ruck rules, like Grundy's and you know, Sherry's another, they can play a bit of bully ball in, in the ruck um, yeah. and really monster the opposition. So I'm not sure if I've really come out on top a lot from that trade, but I think I'm just ahead given would have cost, uh, I've avoided a donut there. But yeah, got Grundy back in, so I'm okay with that. Um, hopefully he finishes strong. If he doesn't, then it's a bad trade. Um, Fisher, I think you had to get him back, really. Um, he was sub, so you had to really get rid of him. And then he was cheap, and Sheasel had moved up the ground, so it was pretty much a no-brainer to get him. Uh, I thought he was playing all right. On the weekend, he didn't play good, and I can see why he was subbed there, but maybe his confidence is a sh- bit shot or something. I don't know. And then uh, Nick Martin, uh, yeah, I, I never – this is my – I don't know if it's Achilles here was the right word, but I um, I panic early in the season every year, and I make the same mistakes – I see all these players going really well, and then I have a player that's underperforming. Boom, trade button. Mm-hmm. What happens? 130, 130. Honestly, I think my average uh, captaincy, tra- um, not captaincy, average player that I've traded out is about, I reckon, apart from Rao, 130. Like traded, I think Young, 130. Uh, Nick Martin, mm-hmm. English scored 130. 
Oh, There's many more players too. <laughs> every premium I've traded out. I think Trader Steel, he went 120. So yeah, every player I trade out goes 130. So uh, yeah, got to be a bit more patient, I think is the word. But yeah, just the three. <laughs> yeah, no, I, lo- no, I like that strategy. We, we, we're talking about captains. So uh, just look at who George trades out and uh, <laughs> whack the, the C or the yeah. BC on it. Nice 130. <laughs> Maybe that's a strategy, on, boys. George hasn't got any, oh, any trades to, to burn no. now. But uh, going into next season, maybe that's uh, our strat, boys. Come on. Yeah, George, you can't jump on the Soul Play podcast without a drive by. It'd be rude. <laughs> well, be happy to cop that. George, I will tell you that watching English isn't is a genuine nightmare because he's gone 134 of his last eight, but he hasn't gone 130 back to back. It's 130, 80, 130, 70, 130, 95. Like it, it's not a fun watch, but it just puts oh, so like if geez. imagine if he was competitive, how good he would be because he he's got a super coach game as a ruckman. Except he's got no competitiveness bones in his body. Well, Jeez, if I English just, uh, is a nightmare, then Matt Rouse yeah. a, a bloody <laughs> night terror. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tell you. Very, very like, quickly. What's yeah. what do we think's happened, boys? So we know what English was like last year. What's the stop? Where's, where's the drop the off numbers. for you guys? At, but but why? Why do you think this the stoppage is the case, numbers right? for the dogs has gone down this year? As a team, and, as a team, yeah, as a team. Yeah. And it, it's part part to do with, I don't know if it's exactly it, but the, the makeup of their midfield has got quicker this year with the inclusion of Richards, I think. So they're not they're not playing such congested style of game as they played last year. I'm not sure if George has anything to add on to that, but obviously less less stoppages means less opportunities for English to get the ball. I saw some good signs on the weekend, like the the goal assist he had to Trelaw, where he sort of danced his way out of traffic in the rain, in the mud, it was like, that's what we saw from him last year, playing like as that extra midfielder. Um, but yeah. yeah, just haven't seen that that level of competitiveness that if he had the competitiveness that Cherry had, he would be averaging 130. Like, it's pretty simple, I'd say. Yep. Yeah. It was it was that's, that's interesting. What's that, George? Uh, the stoppage numbers going down for the dogs. That's interesting. Definitely would be a factor. Yeah, but yeah, when I watch when I watch English, um, I think the, he played against Meek. Um, I'm not sure how long ago now. And at halftime, English had it was either one or zero contested possessions. Meek had ten. So I think these like big, strong ruckmen, like like you look at look at Meek's physique and like Sherry and Gorn, these guys and Grundy. I don't know he just doesn't compete well. In the ruck, and it might be the concussions because remember he missed a lot of preseason with concussion. Sure. He was just running all preseason, mm. doing no contact for a very long time. So maybe that's a factor. I'm not sure. So yeah, still got his around the ground game. You know, still bobs up for those marks at half back and on the wing, which you don't really see ruckman. He's a good kick as well. Like Grundy's efficiency is horrific. That he, I don't know. My guess would be it's in the 50s or low 60s without without looking it up. So he's would be much higher. So still can score sort of differently, but. I don't know. I just think at the stoppages, he's not physical enough. It leads to less hitouts. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great point, Janeth. That's why you're um, the soil play analysis, if you, if you will. So, <laughs> yeah, we love that. Uh, hot topics, boys. Um, oh, where do we start? Yeah. I mean, yeah, carnage is inevitable in, in Supercoach, isn't it? Uh, I, I think, DR, you have the list, or is it Janeth? One of the, one oh, of the two. I've got the list. Janeth's got the list. Oh, yep. Run us through yep. our um, our injuries for this week, mate, and, and what carnage we're facing come year round 20. Yeah, so I'll just go through the relevant ones and if there's any sort of impacts to other players. Uh, so Jay Jordan Dawson, one week concussion, just a, just fortunate that he played out further. They said the concussion was later in the game um, than what many feared was through the Nate Caddy sort of hip and shoulder after kick goal. Nothing malice, no malice in there, but one week there. TDK, unfortunately, out for the home and away season, which is, as a Blues fan, it's, it's, gut, it's a gut yeah, that, punch. That's a big one. Yeah. Um, like, as a Blues fan, at least we have a backup Ruckman like a pit in it, like the quality off pit in it there, because, like, yeah. if it was a case like Melbourne, our season would be shot. Like, it doesn't matter how far you, you can't go five weeks we had a ruckman in this competition just just very um, quickly mate we've got yeah. joyce andrews and Payne all yeah, available i was gonna say that Who, who's so, going to keep back for you that's uh oh the people have been saying to get hipwood back there have you um, got the call and, up yet well 
Who knows, <laughs> mate? I may just uh, do some stretching this week just in case Fags uh, gives me gives me that call. But uh, look, I I'm pretty concerned uh, with our key back stocks at the moment. Harris only out for a week, I believe. But uh, yeah, Joyce was that backup backup type option. Um, you know, do they? Joyce, Andrews, they're all going down. Uh, may need to get bloody Darcy Ford down there or something the way they're going. So, uh, yeah, not super coach related, but uh, yeah, nice. we're struggling this week. And, and just very quickly, non super coach related as well. How close the season is? We're second, Sydney first, U's third, Frio fourth, GWS fifth. Like, if we drop a couple of games here, we're, we're traveling. Like, yeah. And you don't want to travel. In yeah. Finals. That's like, it's going to be that's huge. the main thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no TDK may impact some of the mids because I know with uh Pidnet in our stoppage game does go up a fair bit. So, this uh, if you remember D, uh, DR a couple of seasons ago, we did the with Pidnet without Pidnet dart in the preseason, and we saw yes, just I how do. good of a correlation there was to our midfielders. So, I think yep. this could have a positive impact for the Crips while shown us, uh, but unfortunate for TDK. I'll group these next two together. So, Nank. One week again with concussion. And the reason why I say that is because many that would be looking for cover for Nank or TD Ken Kruger also has a concussion. So one to two weeks Ooh, there, oh. Nathan Kruger. So for those that were looking for their ruck swing, uh, a bit unfortunate. Uh, as I mentioned, no Jackson on the injury report. Parrish is a test. So this probably impacts the makeup of the SNM mid- midfield. Does he even play? It's a... It's a wait and see. Uh, Spills, very quickly, yes, no. Do you reckon he plays? And if so, does he impact your midfielders? Sorry, you have to repeat that one, man. Just literally just cut oh, out for like a five seconds. Uh, do you reckon Parrish plays this week? He's, a oh, test. He, he's knocking on the door, but it's a perfect time for him to come in. I mean, we've we've been so good this year with, with Durham in the midfield and Shield had a really good game, but... Yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a terrible form, and so we dished up. And I think, yeah, Brad Scott and the coaching staff are going to have to get ruthless. And I, I said, I, I might might have been about to go now. I said that I don't think Parrish gets back in a side because who goes out for him? But now you could list a few few names that are that are probably vulnerable, man. And I, I think we'll squeeze him in somehow. And yeah, I, I, I do worry a little bit for maybe your call well types. So they monitor his minutes a little bit. Like, do they, does he get, like, he's still, uh, he's probably our second best midfielder at the moment. Yeah. But do they just, mm-hmm. do they balance it out? Like, have Parrish in there, like, call well, pinch it, play, play a little bit Parrish, more forward and Durham. And, pa- so, yeah, Parrish, call well, Merritt, just, Durham, those yeah. four. And then yeah, Trigger think... in there probably makes the most sense. Like, I wouldn't be yeah. moving call well. Like, he, yeah. he's nah. the man, I think, that almost got this back yeah. into that game. Like yeah, he, he, he was is, making yeah. the difference in, in my humble opinion. He was the one that was making a real difference. He's the one that really stood out yep. to me. Just effort, tenacity. He 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 had the will to win that game. Yep. And when he went off, I, I thought that was um that was pretty much curtains. Yeah, yeah, big, big, big point there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh at Gold Coast, Took Miller's one to two weeks away, so he could come back next week. That would make it three weeks on the sidelines. Probably was still the correct move. With three weeks to go and seven weeks left, it's you're missing half the season almost. Jad Wits is a test, so it's probably not so much super coach relevant, but the difference between going up against Wits and Moyle from the opposition perspective is a big difference. It's just something to monitor if you have a ruck that is Gold Coast on the run home. Max Gorn is a test this week. He should be right to play. I think the D's oh, were, always, I um, so. were always targeting this week for him to get up. Positive news for yep. you, George. Philippo's only one to two away, so I think he's a bit ahead of schedule as well. So what, where'd that, that one come like, out, Janet? Like That's four, four to six weeks or something, wasn't it? Yeah, and now it's one two, so he's way ahead of Damn, schedule with the hit. Nice. Beautiful. Gov is a test, which is good news for me because good for you. Yeah, you I need tell it. you what, like <laughs> yeah, I, just, yeah. I just want to have twenty-two primos, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't want to have to feel this bargain, mate. Week. <laughs> yeah. Um, and on that same note, Elliot Yo is also a t- he's not a test. He's on he's not on the injury report, so <laughs> he's looking to get some main training. That's that's the only thing. So I think there's a fair bit of good news in Come this on, Yo. Come on, that's pretty good. We need some good Come news. On, yeah, and really there's one more that I forgot. Um, I'm just gonna go and find it at Adelaide. Now this is this was very interesting. Matt Crouch is a test for this week. 
Remember when we were oh. talking, he was out for the season, and now he's yeah. a test. <laughs> it's what a gun. <laughs> wow. Kudos to what's going on here. The ultimate Matt professional. Crouch has responded well to surgery, and he, he's looking to resume contact training. Now, if you're the Crows, you'd be, I don't know, stupid's probably not the right word, but what's the point? Like you probably want to manage him. Probably the best, like, best. Would you would you bring Crouch in? Like, yeah. Is there reason to bring him in? Uh, I love Crouchy. I, I think Laird is has played much worse. I I think playing Laird and Crouch together, it's not right because we've got you know Zach Taylor's come in. Uh, mm, like these, he had one good full game really, but he's probably best on ground for us against the Dons in the first half before he faded out. Like Saligo giving Berry's out of contract, so he's playing for his his career really, um, or at the Crows. So when it's season over for us, it's like we need to give. You know, you don't want to compromise the kids' minutes for for older players. So I'm fine with yeah. one or lead of Crouch in. Um, Crouch was probably leading our best and fairest until he got injured. So I'm fine with that, but. Um, I wouldn't want it, yeah, at the expense of kids. So if we line up with Crouch, Laird, and I don't know, cut Taylor's minutes, I would, yeah, I don't want to see that. But yeah, I think Crouch, yeah, underrated season, I reckon. It depends how you, I guess a lot of the backward backwards hand passing, you can say might not have been the best way to play as a modern midfielder, but I thought he was good for us. But um, yeah, I'm a Matt Crouch fan, a bit biased. So I'll be good to see him play anyway. If he, um, I think he will play though. That's probably the only one out of those guys that worked. You know, you had like Amon and Wines and there's a couple of others, but he was like, he was the only one that was really effective. I mean, he's throwing a dart, dartboard. He's the only one that hit. So, yeah, Crouch. I was more so going from the perspective, like, he's a good enough player. Like, is there any reason to risk him re-injuring that shoulder um, again? But, like, yeah, I see where you're coming from, but no rank. And you probably – I'd really love to see Hinge go into the middle. I know David King is a big – Advocate off there. I just think any halfback that's you can always replace a halfback, but to find a midfielder from a halfback position is like gold. So if you could like this is probably the time to experiment for next year, which is high expectations, George top eight should be on the cards really. Just didn't get off to a good start this year. So yeah, just it'll be interesting to see how Adelaide approach it. But that's that's the injury spill. So a fair bit there, good a bit of good news from I guess the the general perspective with yeah. Gorn, Yo, hopefully Gov. Um, yeah, very glass half like, full, I reckon. But this there's also a fair couple of concussions and the TDK news is absolute disaster for Blues and Supercoach yep. owners like. Yep. A tra- trade out option. So if you've got some luxury trades up your sleeve and what, it, what we're still looking to do, so... If you boys want to, what do we got here? So, like, who's who's someone in, like, I guess, each of your sides that you're probably looking to, like, pull the trigger on, like, underperforming or? Well, I think I'll, I'll put out a couple of names here. Now, I think the first one, our advice is going to be pretty obvious. It's it's your boy, Matt Rowell, or one of your exes. Spills. Yeah. I'm sure you're not going to go back there. Not getting back again, in this next, mate. Well, mate. Maybe, no maybe 2030 <laughs> if the form's there. <laughs> 20 um, Look, Matt Rowe's the first one, and probably the other one is Zachy Boy Fisher. Zachy Fisher. What do we do with Zach Fisher? So are we all in agreement, boys? Even at his current price, Matt Rowe is a must-trade-out option. I suppose the only thing that you brought this up before, Spills, what is his doing? price now is, is not very friendly. Him? And the <laughs> options, depending on how much you've actually got in the bank, yeah, could be – pretty limited so that's why i pulled the trigger last week mate because it was one of those ones where like he's got what like you got one more week i mean and rose was pretty very still really cheap for like what sort of output he put so it was like you had to do it now or you you probably stuck with him so it's, it's a funny one you'd rather hold that trade but yeah but who do you go to now it's yeah, it's, it's almost yeah. curtain. So, yeah, Rao was one for me. Obviously, I don't have any trade outs anymore because I have no trades, but this this was a really relevant one for me last week. And I think, yeah, George 100% would agree with me there because I'm pretty sure it was the exact same boat with his final trade. Um, Janice, who, who's your number one trade out? Who's someone that you're looking at? You, you, you got the one trade up the sleeve and you're looking to get a few come back. 
are you, are you tempted, mate? You're half tempted to just pull the trigger on someone that's just not getting the job done for you. I'm going to back in the boys. Back in the spuds. <laughs> always <laughs> being conservative. Uh, that's good. Back I'm in. always conservative. But look, look, I I have to give it up to them for, for covering Gorn, for covering McGovern. Um, Simkin, Simkin is the one where I think he's got through the tough games. I was expecting him to struggle against Sydney and Carlton. But now... <laughs> Geelong, Richmond, West Coast, those three games yeah. for that North midfield. What we've really impressed. But I think they're going to win. I reckon they're going to win two of those three um, North. Yeah, so, I like it. Yep. Uh, they cool. could even win this week against Geelong. Like they're they're really good team that have a, good, a lot of good players in there. That's that's the only player I would contemplate. Nicky Martin is just an enigma. You can't, like, he can go that 140. It's almost better that he plays ahead of the ball because they look for him ahead of the ball yeah. as well. Um, but he really could have, if if he if he got that kick from Merritt, they are just oh, I would have been, I would have been off his head. Straight and, like, in front. I think people forget this. Like, he was, yeah. I reckon he was on about 45 at quarter time too before Adelaide yeah. went on that run. So, like, yes, he's. And he got tagged. He got tagged. He did, well, yeah. Too. Murphy I, went I think, to, yeah. Yeah, 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 it was a it was a it was a weird one, but it was still effective enough to like impact his scoring. But I think Martin's a funny one because, like, yes, he's probably the worst defender in all of our size in terms of like being our D six clearly. But I mean, I'm happy to have him. He, uh, he's his best is really good, and he's so highly owned by the that sort of top one to ten percent. So I don't think you really dwell on him too much. And yeah, yeah where, wherever he plays, he he still manages. Can I throw a random one out here at George's? So, George, let's just say, mate, if um, you've got Humphreys as your D7 and you're looping Nick Martin, what's what's a score that you're going to take from Nick Martin if you've got the Humphreys option there? You to have loop? to go. Is it, is it 90 <laughs> plus? Are we looking at 85 plus? Have you got a rough sort of score in your mind, mate, for the people that are that have that luxury of looping someone like Martin with a Humphreys about a score that you'd be comfortable taking? from Nick Martin, if you had him as the emergency mate? Um, I would... Sorry, someone's yelling outside, but I'm... I would take like an, like an eight. Uh, I think Humphrey's had that one really good score against um, against Collingwood oh. where he got an intercept with good scaling and then they was talking about the game plan where they were just playing high possession against Collingwood. So I think that score of 10, 108 or something that he Rainbow, got... Yeah. Um, probably... Close to an outlier, but he does have. I think he's got Tom Stewart's role. Uh, I think he'll yeah, probably he average seventy five, and I'd probably take. If, if Martin goes eighty, I'll take it. Okay. If Martin I think goes he 80. would. I think yeah. he would. Yeah. yeah. Anything under no, seventy five, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it the other way around, though, George. Would you? Humphreys goes eighty. You'd still no. roll with Martin. Oh, sorry, no. my line. Yeah, I, I would take. 95 from Humphreys. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's I, I, that, I think that's solid. I, I'd be with you there. I he definitely did the right thing the other week, George, with the 108, like banking that. Like, real, I know like it didn't really go the way he probably would have wanted it to. It could have been a lot worse, but it was a smart, like it was the it's, right call. I think it was the right in the hand. Bird in the hand spills. Bird in the hand. The old bird in the hand. Yep. The bird in the hand. That's um, it. Just very quickly, by the way, boys. So, Dia, you know how you've been going on about 7.30 start times, right? Yeah. This is going to be the biggest gripe this week. Not 7.30. Saturday, 4.35. Two games. St. Kilda, Essendon. Gold Coast, Brisbane. You're taking the piss, surely. At I've never done no, Two games on a Saturday at 4.35. Why? Get rid of it. Give us a Thursday <laughs> night. What are you doing? I found it. What's going on? Pull your fingers out. That's terrible. What are we doing? At least have like that's, that's, at least have one of like time. you know what they should do, boys. Oh. Like, why don't they have you know back in the day they don't do it anymore, but like the, the free to air coverage on a Saturday afternoon, they don't do that anymore. They don't do like, that. Why anymore. wouldn't they just have like a two o'clock start and then I know it's all money related, but it's just so frustrating. I mean so you, having two you games at, at the, the same you, time. Many won't be able to watch the Q clash and this and the oh and the Saints. On the it's game. annoying. It's even with my yeah. boys' games, right? So back when I played footy, I played two hundred and something games of junior footy. It was like the under elevens, 
then the 13s and the 15s and the 17s, all played at the same ground, same team, one after another. My boys now, because there's all these different divisions, one's playing in Mernda, other one's playing in Diamond Creek. One week it's 8.30 in the morning, next it could be 1 o'clock. It, you can't build a schedule on, on a Sunday because they're just all over the shop. Rolling fish and, it's, and it's Nash's 50th Rolling game this fish. week. <laughs> and the boys are both at different grounds at the same time. So I've got to yeah, take the hit and take off. Max and miss out on his, on his 50th game, which is an absolute spew. So uh, I don't know what's going on with this scheduling. It's from grassroots. Yeah, mate, boys. you got to gotta, gotta, gotta go to the country leagues, mate. It's always the same in the country. You have the thirds, the, the resis and the ones every single week, same time. Head up to Golden week. Square, mate. Up with the doggies. The, yeah, send, send your boys to the doggies. Uh, place. Done, done. George, nah, finish this off nah, here, mate. Nah, Yep. One player that you'd love to trade out of your side, if you could. If there's one bloke, and we're talking premiums here, obviously you're 22 on field, who would you look to trade out and who would you love to bring in for that player, mate? Oh, breaks my heart. Probably Dawson to Lockie Neal. Neal's probably M2. Um, Dawson's had issues like a bit of tag, a bit of positional moving around, form as well happens so i'm um, now concussed yeah. but yeah i think um when i first got it i know you every week you go on about it the other walsh over apple whatever but um yeah oh yeah dawson yeah probably not hasn't been the trading that i hope for it hasn't been bad like when i got him fantastic last five not great but yeah i'd probably do that neil uh neil in for for dawson yeah good call mate that'd be yeah. pretty handy all right, next one, Spilsy. We're going to talk about how to use our remaining trades. And so I'm just yep. going to throw a quick question up here, mate. So you're in a position where we've got two trades remaining or one, to, let's just say one to two trades remaining in the bank. Yeah. Zach Fisher is your 23rd premium. Do we use the trade this week and trade Zach Fisher to – a premium and let's just say you've got 100k in the bank so you can actually trade him up to a decent player or do we hold those two trades and just wait for two of our uber elites to go down and then just trade them out instead of worrying about that 23rd type player so we we'll, might start from the top down janeth you're under me mate what's your thoughts if you're in that particular situation yourself mate would you be looking to trade out fisher or would you be looking to just save them and trade out those ultra premiums, mate, if they go down? It's it's such a tough one because so many variables consider. I'll, I guess I'll start from the top with the DPP. So how valuable is Fisher's cover in your defense and forward line? Because let's say Fisher is playing and he's not the sub. Now we know we do know that he's a sub risk. So I reckon the decision could be made and taken out of your hands on Saturday afternoon, the second game of the round. Fisher's the sub. It's probably, if you want to keep the value that Fisher has in him at the moment, you'd probably move him on because I think North side is actually relatively settled at the moment. There, there isn't many moving parts in terms of uh, the defence in particular. And now with Griffin Logue back as well, they, they actually look very settled. And Fisher seems the odd one out there. Uh, but if he if he really need both the defence and forward cover, if he... When we when we brought in Will Dawson, we were saying that worst case scenario he could be the loop for Sexton and Fisher types, and we no, we really dead. iron off that uh, defensive forward link, and now it's sort of become well Dawson's relevant if we trade our Fisher, and that's the situation I have now. I just have Dawson there; it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, so I'd be moving him on if he's the sub, but if yeah. he's named on field against Geelong, he's on field as in in the start in 22, he is worth holding because yep. there's going to be more carnage to come in the season. There's probably four more weeks we need to navigate. It's not necessarily fire because in the last week, if a player gets injured in the, in the last round, you can't do anything about it. So it's four weeks of injuries we need to navigate. Um, and I think even if you have, go into the last round of the season in your Super Coach Grand Final, you can hold a trade and you can make a big, big sideways move based off matchups alone. I think that's more effective than moving on fish if he's named um, in the starting 22 this week against Shalom. Yeah, very nice, mate. Spilsy, what are you doing in this situation, my friend? 
Yeah, I think you summed up really well there, Janeth. I, I like the idea of, of of waiting to see where he's where he's named and he's sub. Like you definitely want to pull the trigger. Like I, I think if you if you had the two trades there, I'd be getting rid of him for sure. I mean, if you if particularly if you if he's your twenty third premium, like hell yeah, I'd, I'd want to jump off because he's just going to drop so much money. I mean, even if he does play, what output are we going to get? They look yeah, they do look pretty settled there in their defence and. He definitely doesn't have that impact that he did have a few weeks ago now. So, yeah, I'm pretty worried about that. If I had the one trade left, I, I'd it, it might sound, uh, in a way, hypocritical for me to say, but I'd, I'd hold him because it's it's a tricky one. You, you want all the cover you got, and it's just it's it's very unfortunate for for my situation with with Matt Rowe. But that's a, that's next level bad. That's that's like a. That's a six-week sample size of, of 76 average or something. So I think you can justify the case there. But, yeah, if I had one trade, I'd probably want to probably hold and wait and see. But it's all team dependent. But, yeah, I, I have to agree with you there, Janeth. I think, yeah, you wait and see if he's sub. And if he is, you you, you jump off. And if he isn't, then you just ride it out. Um, George, what about yourself, mate? What are you doing if you, if you start Fisher and had a, had a trade or two up your sleeve? Um, it's a hard one. I think if he's your only defender cover and you've got one trade left, I'd probably hold off because I'm not sure what you're getting to anyway. Probably McKercher, I guess. But even then, that's he's been a bit sore and stuff. I don't know how. Yeah, I hope yeah. it should be all right, but you never know. Um, if you've got, yeah, if he's well, I think he plays late because he's because they're north, they play late anyway. Um, but he's kind of unfieldable. You can sort of emergency him, but you can't really straight field with the sub risk. You're going to lose too many points. So I would, um, if he's your only defender cover and you got one trade, I'd probably. Oh, there was a dur- more durable alternative to McKerch. I'd probably go there and get that defender mid swing, and then get he can be your twenty third only to a defender because in the full line you're not really getting to anyone. I guess. Kerno got the nice run. And he's yeah. cheap after he was a bit sore with the ankle, but um, still lies. You probably yeah. like if you've got like a mana or a Dowling, mana's a bit better, but you can probably just get away with that. I mean, your forward line at looping F six. So yeah, mm. I think it depends on how much on on what your cover is. If you've got no cover, uh, you could even wait and to see yeah. like how he goes the next couple of weeks, and if it's a no. shambles and he's dropped a lot of money. We can target Filippo or something like that. So like, he's obviously he's not yeah. too far away as we just established, and he's still really cheap. And he was your plan for is your plan for the twenty third primo. So that's a pretty good strategy as well because he does he does look really good. Wait and see, but he's another I one. Guess, I guess the other thing on that spills is what North North play the first game, one of the first three games around the next three rounds, um, and then mm. in round twenty three they play the the third to last game, and yeah. then they play Hawks in round 24, which they haven't announced the fixture yet. So I'd say that it's okay to just put the emergency on Fisher and see if he, like if he's a sub, you want to keep the value in him, as you were mentioning, George, probably go up to like McKirch if he can, um, or make a move to get to someone that can provide cover across multiple lines. Even if Trent Rivers, I think, isn't, isn't too far away, um, and I think that he's... He's a, he's really he's playing a really good role in the demon side. I can't see a way that he loses midfield role. Um, if you really want to roll the yeah. dice, how about uh, SDK? He's cheese around what four fifty yeah. or something, isn't he? If you really want to roll the dice, this is you know yeah. no <laughs> DPP, but all right, boys. It's like Martin to cover or Dacos. Yeah, good point, George. But, but I guess the main lesson here, Di, is for next year we. We just can't get sucked into these speculative fringe best 22 no, players that have roles. Big like end. Sexton, we got lucky with that. He got that prolonged period of time with Will Powell's um, suspension. Fisher again with McKerch's injury. Like as soon as these players come back in, their roles just, you just lose it. And then they become, it's not even dropped straight out. They're just, they're on the fringe the whole time. So are they the sub? Are they not? That sort of thing. And it's like, are they straight in after an injury? Like it's just, a, it's a lot of stress to just work around with, even if they are value, they're value for a reason, I'd say. Good call, yeah. mate. I think All it's right. our time, boys. 
a time a time. I'm not sure how you want to do this, Dow. If you want to read the questions out or me, I don't mind. But we will absolutely turbo through this. Uh, how many? I'll, I'll come off to you, Dow. We don't have too many anyway, so we'll all smash through this in good time. Eighteen, I think. Yeah, a lot of them will be very similar questions. So, Dow, mail right. handball back to you. Uh, take us away, mailbag. Let's do it. All right, we got the great H here. Get a H away, legend. G'day, boys. Hope you're all well. Special hello to George as well. What to do with Fisher? Good on your age. <laughs> We've just talked about this, haven't we? Can't believe we got stuck to him, into him twice this year. Going back to your XH, which we've talked about. Is he a trade if named? If so, I'm thinking Whitfield or Clark and maybe Richards. Thanks, guys. So I think we've gone through what to do with Fisher. We used him as our big example in the uh, in the last slide. But I suppose Whitfield if H was Clark, to... Though. Get rid of him, Whitfield or Clark. George, you're a Whitfield owner, and I know he's been a very stressful owner at times, mate, the type of bloke that can roll an ankle stepping over a, a pebble type thing. Is he someone you'd recommend to bring in at this stage of the season, mate, in current form? I think so. He's uh, in the other form. I think he's clear D2 to Sheasel. Uh, he does love bigger grounds, like loves NG. Uh, this is just on the eye, not... Uh, I don't have a statistical backup for this, but just um, a lot of his scores recently, like he's played on NG, Adelaide Oval, MCG, Utah's like the past probably eight weeks, like all big grounds, and he loves that. Yeah. Coach also said they want to give him the ball a bit more. So if you can stomach the odd head knock, which he seems to never get a HIA for, I think he's uh, next to, a, I think, bigger grounds. Yeah. I think three of the last five are at bigger grounds. So... And yeah, there's obviously a lot more other variables that go into that, but um, he's playing well, racking up heaps of the ball. I would recommend Whitfield. I like Jordan Clark too. I think they're both great options. Yeah, they're both seriously good options, and like, but yet so different. Yeah. So I think Whitfield's got the ceiling, but I'm a Clark owner, and there's not many weeks where I worry about him. I mean, I never worry about the fact that he's going to get injured or where he's going to score bad. Like, yeah, Whitfield's got that ceiling, but you know, at Clark every week, it's anywhere from 100 to 120. And just, yeah, doesn't matter what week it is. So, yeah, he's pretty stress-free as well. So I, I don't think you can go bad with either of them. I think they're both pretty good selections. All right, Janet, you're making the decision here, mate. Uh, I, I really like Whitfield. Whitfield, and, yeah. yeah, I like Whitfield too. He's they're just good. feeding him. I think Kingsley a couple of weeks yeah. ago as well said that they're just going to try get the ball through Whitfield more. When he was already getting 30, 30 possessions a game, now he's getting high thirties, mid thirties, week on week. Yeah. So it's they are looking he, for him. He so. plays a disgusting then... role for the Giants, whereas whereas um Jordan Clark splits his designated kick. Particularly the long meal comments too. Like the, the <laughs> output from he and Ryan has <laughs> dropped off a little bit. Not too bad, but it's it's still yeah. I think Whitfield's probably got a much yeah. better scoring output. So yeah. I'd probably well, look, I don't think we can there. completely discount Ed Richards either. I'm just looking here since ah. round nine. 163, yeah. 118, 77, 115, 116. A couple of mid eighties and I'm a I'm probably locking him in next year, JR, I reckon. In defense. Be cool. I'm yeah, probably gonna lock cool. him in, yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I really don't mind Ed Richards. I think he's given them another dimension in that midfield as well. Um, look, I think what we can pretty much all agree on is that they're, they're pre, three pretty solid options. And can't H, you really wrong, can't boy. go wrong. But I'm probably with the boys. I'm going Whitfield as my number one. Like I'm going to go Richards two and then Clark three. Only Richards because I think he's got that potential big ceiling as well, playing that midfield role. Um, but but I like all three. I think we all like all three. But probably Lockie Whitfield is uh, is our number one H. All the best luck, brother. Uh, next one is from Emma Waterhouse. G'day, Em. One trade left. Will Dawson to Manor opens up a couple of DPPs, but will he last five weeks? Only have Bruce Boy to cover. Dowling is covering Jordan. So this is another, I suppose, aspect oh. of that last question. Emma's got the one trade left. Do you use that? Sort of on a on a rookie type, or I'd should Emma use on a premium? If I was, I guess, you're waiting for a premium injury. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, I don't. I just don't see the point of like sideways trading rookies, particularly when it's your last trade. I mean, you could, yeah, man is not too bad. You almost cop it, like. But I don't know. It's tough. It's a tricky one because it, 
Team team dependent. What's what's the side like? How many how many injuries well, are we it's dealing? Only with, but... only Revel to cover. Yeah. Dealing I guess the other you know. thing with this is that if you can go Will Dawson to Mana in two trade in one trade, that's at, you have at least 180k in the bank. So it's 180k in one trade. I think if you wait for a Primo to go down, even if it's a Primo they score five or something, yeah, then you have 180k to play with to get to a whatever Primo you want, basically. Yeah, you probably. So I think the other I think I'd rather that, especially with the money in the bank there. How about yourself, yeah. George? You are uh, holding on to this trade, mate, and just wait for a Primo injury. I would hold off, and then maybe you can look at Philippu in two weeks if you want that extra yeah, player. Nice. If you need it, I you like don't need it. the extra That's player now because you never know. Like you lose a, I don't know, say Dacos goes down again, um, then what are you fielding? Yeah. And, a, and a lot of people wouldn't be able to move off Dacos in that instance as well. So yeah. it would be yeah. a, it'd be a yeah. POD move to. To be at not POD, but it would be a, a move that could catapult you up in the ranks as well. Love it, D Mac. Away, mate. Who should my final primo be? Merritt, Sinclair, Goulden, or Butters? Now, George, I think you're the only Goulden owner out of the three of us. You've had a pretty good time with Errol, mate, since you traded him in. I think he's been really good value and he's dished up some really nice scores. Uh, would you have him at the top of the bunch here, mate, or would you potentially have someone else here out of the four options, mate? Yeah, Errol's kind of overperformed. I think he got a bit more mid-time on the weekend too. So, no, he's been great, Errol. I would probably go – I'd have to look at tags for Merritt, to be honest. Sinclair's good, and he's got the Marvel run. Um, you probably missed out on a few easy fixtures as well, just off the West Coast game, and – I think he scores better in defense, certainly last year anyway. I'd probably go Merritt. Zerit number one. Spills, how about you, buddy? Yeah, I think Merritt's definitely in revenge mode at the moment. He was he was livid after the game on Friday, absolutely livid. So I think there's a response game coming. Um, but I'm assu- yeah, final primo. I'm assuming he obviously doesn't own any of these four. I know we saw a howler from Zach Butters, but I, I just can't go past him. I just can't. I mean, he's he's so good. He's going to get tagged this week, though. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a tricky um, one because, like, uh, on a just on paper, Butters for sure. But yeah, it's all match up dependent as well. And you know, Sinclair's got the Marvel run. I think they're all very, very similar scoring output players. I don't think you can go pretty wrong with either of them. So, Jenneth. Um, yeah, oh, I think I'm with George that if you told me that Sinclair was playing a pure defensive role, I'd go Sinclair. Um, but it, it's between Merritt and Butters for me. With with Butters, he's going to get tagged by Chincotta this week. Chincotta did the role earlier the, in the year at Adelaide Oval. Uh, but So the next two for Butters and Port Adelaide is pretty difficult. Carlton, Sydney. But then you finish with Melbourne, Adelaide, Fremantle. Fremantle's also a pretty difficult matchup. But at the same time, for Merritt, they have Freo in two weeks and then Sydney, Brisbane to finish off, which is arguably the the two hardest midfield matchups right there. So it's not really great either way. But with Spills, I think one of the big things for that's with that's with Merritt is you won't like it was uncharacteristic seeing Merritt be on the bench for ten minutes in the last quarter. So yeah. I think he's he's really he's gonna be really willing this team of line. I think he could be a really good VC option this week. Like we keep yeah. going back to the well with Merritt, seeing which game that he actually puts it all together, like that Collingwood one. But mm. again, Swan at St. Kilda I can't see him getting tagged. This is probably one of the games that he's probably not gonna get tagged. Um with no wind hang in there. Response game too. So, It'd probably be Merritt. We don't, we don't want to lose this week. And all, and also just very quickly on on Butters, I was I was slightly concerned seeing when the final teams were announced now before the bounce that is named on the bench. It's a couple couple of times now in the last couple of weeks that he's been named on the bench to start the game, and obviously that means he start on the bench. So you miss that early scaling when really everything's on an equal playing field, so you don't have anyone jumping out. Um, so I think so you're starting from zero when, for instance, a Rosie is on a 15, 20 already. So you're already starting from wire, from a way back. I think with captaincy, I'm just going to be really conscious that 
you can't be starting from 15 points back. Like it's too much. Like even yeah. that is too much to overcome unless you have a real blinder. So just a lesson yeah. note to self for the future. Well, no, Rao started on the bench uh, last week. And George has brought up a couple of times in his videos about Alex Sexton. The fact that where he's lost a lot of his value points wise, the fact that he's starting on the bench. And as George is mentioning, finishing quarters, particularly finishing the game yeah. on the bench as well. And if it's a close game, that's crunch time. Year score is going to be buggered because everyone else yeah. is getting the scaling. I'm going to just throw a bit of a cat amongst the pigeons here. I'm going Jack Sinclair as my number yeah. one, actually. I, I really like I, his DPP. I, I don't, mind, it. Yeah. I don't yeah. mind the fact that if you've got your Martins down there, your Dacos down there, that if you've got Sinclair, and I'm assuming this is going to be in the midfield because he's got three other midfielders there, that he can – If and, again, it's his last trade. He could be, be someone like that could cover two to three players down there. If you've got your Humphreys down there as well. So that little bit of DPP – Probably puts me over the line. I love his Marvel run. I love his ceiling as well. I think, what is a high 80s has been his lowest score in the last however many weeks. So I'm going to go a little bit different to you guys and uh, say Jackie Sinclair for nine, Black, my number Black one. Man. So uh, sorry, D-Mac. We, a little bit different there <laughs> in some respects, mate. But uh, look, either way, you should be getting a decent player. All the best, brother. Next one is the ladies man calls a black liege. Your jump is on the way, my friend. Hope you get it soon. Hello, Legends. Thoughts on Rio to Sarong. Leaves me with 66k and two trades for Super Coach Finals. Yes. Looking he's pretty good you, there. What are you what are you waiting for, mate? Pull or trigger. is there any other options? Better in <laughs> one trade. Have 601k. Fourth more league. Uh, I like it. Beat. I like this one, Causa. I think Sarong's in he's you're not gonna get him any cheaper. He just pumped out 140. Seriously low. Uh, he's he's fine. I'm Matt Rowell, come on, you got to get rid of him. God, what are we? Yeah. Um, thumbs up from you, George. Rowell to uh, Sarong, mate, to the schlong. Yeah, I'm surprised he's lasted this long with Rowell. Just get it done. <laughs> yeah. Get it done, Gorza. <laughs> Janet, any other options from you, mate? Or are you yeah, uh, locking the schlong? Just having a very quick look at any other options around that range. And yeah, I think. I think Caleb Strong is pretty, pretty easy option. One very, very quickly, big shout out to Andy Brayshaw. He's had his last sort of oh, stretch right. has been quite One of George's been underrated. Yeah. Just gone Loves under Andy. the radar a little bit. So I know he's been battling form and fitness throughout the year, but he, he's, if anyone knows him, he's been a handy pod the last couple of weeks. George was last. George, you were on uh, Andy last year, weren't you, mate? You bought him in a decent price, didn't you, from memory? Yeah, five thirty k he was. I think had a bit of soreness earlier in the year and said he was good, and he was good. I think he averaged one fifteen for me, so he was good. Yep. Um, this man. year maybe Young's taken Young and Fife in yep. there. I don't know if they're taking points, but I bought. I got Andy in, in the other format. Um, always been one of the, one of the favourites of mine. So and he's been really really good. And yeah, Freo's run to finish the year is pretty good. Yeah. Do you reckon next year, mate? Let's just say Fife gets phased out. I can't really see Fife playing midfield next year. I just don't think his body's up to it. Just too slow. Okay in the contest, but getting from contest to contest, he's just he's not there anymore. So you think if Fife exit, exits at midfield, you think Andy could be actually a decent starting pick for us next year that may provide a little bit of value given the fact he's had a bit of a downer this year compared to a couple of previous years, mate? There's no reason why you come back to can't get back to 110, really. If you got Young playing twenty five percent forward every week, and you got Fife out of the midfield, yeah, um, yeah, I don't see why not. What I will say, Dion, yeah, that very quickly is that Maddie Johnson's going to come with a rush. He's a very good player, Maddie. So do you, you rate him? Do you you rate Maddie Johnson? I've watched I've watched him last year very closely as known, and this year as well. He's injured now, but he he nah, he's a he's, jet. He's going to be a very good player. He's got he's got a lot of skills that he's got young five skills. I'd say. Yeah. What's going very on with Erasmus? Just randomly, anyone heard anything on too Erasmus? Many mids, too many mids. Too many mids. Same with Brody. He probably needs to be traded. Yeah. I think he's, he's I a think local he, boy, isn't he? Erasmus. He's a WA yeah, he boy. Plays yeah, he's just he'd play every week. He's yeah. putting yeah, up he's, big numbers in the waffle, yeah. but I think yeah, kicking like a bit like Sardis, kicking is a bit of an issue at the moment yeah. for him. Yeah. Okay. That too, yeah. yeah. Will Brody's still been killing it at um, reserves <laughs> level, hasn't he? Just, yeah, can't get a look in the poor fella. Uh, yeah, good one, Corsa. Love those trades, buddy. Next one, Super Coach Crazy. Hey, man. Hey, Legends. Got a couple of questions, if that's cool. What percentage, or well, number one, what percentage of the game of Super Coach is skill versus luck? Oh, Interesting question. Um, Janeth, you're the 
professor. You're known as the professor here, mate. What do you reckon on this? It's an interesting question. The game is super coach. I compare it to poker at times. Sometimes you can go in with pocket aces and you lose to your 7-2. But at the same time, we, we've got George and we, we we nickname him the GOAT for a reason. He's just so super consistent, always inside that top 1,000, top 1%. So what's your percentage of it, mate? Skill versus luck, if you could put a very quick percentage on it. I'd say it is... I'd say it's 70% skill, 30% luck. And the, yeah, the only reason I go okay. more skill than luck is that the best coaches can bounce back from a five, a zero that you get in a week because you don't react to it. You're just like, yeah, it happened. Can't do anything about it. Um, where I think some of the more reactive coaches see it a five. If they're a keeper, if you plan to have them in the end of the season, it doesn't matter what their value is. I think that's no. one of the big things that goes underrated, and that's where the skill part comes into. Whereas you need luck, you need to be able to dodge the injuries, especially the one weekers, because you don't have enough, you don't have enough reason to trade them out. Um, but even then, like those that have the skill for super coach, don't trade out those one weekers, and they back in that player for the rest of the season. I think that's the big difference. I, the luck, the luck part plays so it's such a big, such a big role. Because you may you may be on top of the ladder of your league all season and then get knocked out in straight sets because your players don't have the right matchups or someone gets injured. That's just the luck side of things. But you the skill got you into the position where you are first in the lead up to super coach finals. I guess that's where I'm coming from. Beautiful, mate. Spilsy, yeah. Janice gone with a 70-30 split. Mate, are you, are you similar or I can't I can't disagree with that at all. It, yeah, it takes a there's a lot of luck involved, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of strategy as well, and there's a few things that I've done this year that I wish I didn't, and, yeah, uh, Jan touched on that about being aggressive and holding those players, and why would you try sideways trade premium when you just want them in your sight at the end of the season? So, yeah, that's one of a lot of very good points. So I think 70-30 is probably probably about right, to be honest. Would, it, would you reckon, George, would you, would you go with that? I'd probably go 90 skill, 10 luck. Oh, I like it. I think I, like like, I finish around, I think, I don't know, my average rank's probably about 1K over the past seven years. Sort of always been give or take, um, like, between 300 and 2,000 since yeah, I started yeah. YouTube. But, like, I think you boys, you've interviewed him, uh, Dia, but uh, Mario's Magic is just on another level. I'm not quite at that level yeah. where he's, I think he's got across the formats five or six top 50 finishes, including a, including two wins. Freakish. So clearly, uh, there's this, a lot of skill involved. Um, don't get me wrong, there's luck in, like if you dodge Tom Green, for example, this year when you got the five, like that's a massive, enormous leg up. So um, I think it's still mostly mostly skill. To, to win, definitely a bit of luck, like dodging injuries and stuff. But uh, every year is different, like getting more trades, DPPs have come in. So it's a lot of it's, you know, it's a bit unknown how to play it. Um, you know, like boosts and stuff like that. So whoever can adapt quickest uh, sort of does well. And we had like the buys, buys this year as well. So like, was that more of a guns and rookies year? Like what do we look at next year? Um, I, I still think this game is, is mostly skill. And like me trading in Merit for 660, Ralph for 640, that's a skill issue. So uh, it's still got a lot to work on. But I, I do think that the absolute best, most disciplined players will finish very high um, every year. So th there can be the odd outlier year where everything goes wrong. But for the most part, I do think skill is a much bigger factor than luck. Yeah, well said, mate. And uh, look, you both make very good points. Uh, 70, 30, 90, 10. I'll go 80, 20. Right in the middle of you then, boys. So, uh, <laughs> oh, very, very nice. Look, yeah. Sitting on the fence. Good on you, DR. Got All another right, one here as well. Got, second one. Yeah, the... yeah, favorite player from your supported teams and favorite player that doesn't play for your club. So me, I'd have to yeah. go with the Pepsi Max King. Absolutely. Everyone knows that. And uh, Max look, King. Either the Pepsi, Pepsi Max Ma King, mate. Oh, the Pepsi, Pepsi. Ma I thought it said old Pepsi. I didn't hear no, the I Pepsi did too. I, 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 <laughs> Max I King? I heard Max King. <laughs> I heard Max oh, King. <laughs> right. No, no. Please, Max King, please, mate. Couldn't couldn't hold uh, the Pepsi Max King's boots. Not fit for it, boys. Uh, so no, definitely, Darcy Wilmot for me. 
And uh, look, it's hard to go past the bond, but I've always been a big fan of Took the trademark Miller. Hasn't had the best year this year, but just loves what he stands for. You know, showed a lot of loyalty um, to, to the club when lots of people were, were going around him. Uh, loved the way he goes about it. Uh, works hard. One of the best two-row runners in the comp. So uh, I'd have to probably go uh, Took Miller. Janeth. Favorite player from your club, and then another club. Oh, that's really the, the, the my club is easy. Patrick Cripps um, has always been one of my favorites. So I've I've always sort of gravitated towards loyalty, like loyal players, yeah. and the fact that he's okay. hung fat with us um, has been big, big. But I, th- I think I'm more. I'm not so much about like a favorite player, singular favorite player, but at another mm. club or. There's so many I could just rattle off. I, I've sort of come to take North as like my second second team this season. You just sorry for just, him, dear. Just the under the underdog <laughs> story. I just love it. So Sheasel, <laughs> McKercher, Cherry, uh, LDU I have too many North players in Supercoach. But yeah, I think Dunks is another one because yeah, you see so many offensive minded offensive minded midfielders, and you just you just hope that like an, every team needs a defensive minded midfielder, not you know like a two way runner. I mean, Dunks is Dunks is brilliant for that. So let's let's lock in Josh yep. Dunk for that. Love him. Sure. Well, you yep. might you might have stolen George. I don't know. I know he's always been one of George's favorite. We'll hear from him in a sec. Uh, <laughs> I think it's someone else. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, who are you going, Spills? Favorite Don's yeah. players at number fourteen in the background there, mate. Or uh, yeah. No, it has to be. Always has, always will be. Um, yeah, love always Ridley. Just love, well. love, love, love watching him kick it. And yeah, he's just just so strong in defence. I love. I've always loved like a pod, like someone that like, everyone loves. Merritt. You know, everyone loves the big dogs. Everyone's always loved Tipper back in the past. But you know, I like someone that just gets the job done every week and doesn't get the recognition. So I jumped on Ridley early, and he's he's still a champion. So yeah, can't go past Riddles. And from another club, um, I, I do like. Dunkley, but um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Amateur Law Boys. I love I love Adzi, as Adam. you know. So <laughs> no, All right. Dunks podcast, Big. absolutely love it. So <laughs> Ads and Dunks. And Green, oh Tom Green as well. I love the green room. So Tom green. I, like, I like Tom Green. Yeah, he, he's good. He's good value. George, what about All yourself, right. mate? Our oh, favorite. <laughs> I mean, it's been on the crease for two years, but Jordan Dawson's fun to watch. I think he's a great captain. Yeah. Slotted straight <laughs> one year in. Okay, you're captain. You're that good. <laughs> anyway, uh, I love Jordan Dawson. <laughs> Does whatever. Was it made a few comments the other day about, you know, he doesn't care if he's not getting touches as long as the team wins. Don't like to hear that. But he's, um, yeah, he's, he's fun to watch when he's on like marking, like can kick goals, can play any position. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, love. Dawson. On a side note, I think Dowling will become one of my favorites, like yeah. him. But yeah, try to stick to one here. And then favorite from another club. Oh, when he's in form, Isaac Heaney is the most fun oh, to watch. Oh, yes. Nice. Nice. He's yeah, had a few stints. Where he's like the, the, I think two years ago, like the first five, six, seven weeks, he was the best player in the comp. Same yeah. for this year as well. And when he's just going for hangers, kicking goals. You know, his field kicking is sublime as well. So I love, love Isaac. So I've got to give it to him. I'm surprised it wasn't a doggy. Like, I know that there's been the Bazlenka love affair in the years as well and the, the dunks <laughs> as well. Uh, so, McCray, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the old Bazlenka. It'd be interesting to see where uh, he lands himself next year. Next one is from the Silver Pigeon. G'day Legends, one of the biggest supporters of this podcast. Hi team, two trades left playing for leagues. Should I upgrade Jordan Dawson to either Sinclair or Neil? Or just hold with McKercher and field mana as emergency or keep trades for injuries or one last upgrade during the Supercoach finals. Laurie Evans, defender emergency. He did really well last week. And Dowling forward emergency. Thanks for your help this year. So are we upgrading Dawson to a Sinclair or a Neil? Or are we happy with holding McKercher on field? It's a tough one. A real tough one. Um, um I'd, I'm, I'd, I'm, I'd be happy to. I move, move to Neil. If you can, if yeah. you can make it, yeah. If you can, yeah. McCurtron Field is okay, but at the same time, I think he's better suited as a twenty third. Um, yeah. but I'm again, Dawson's McCurtron. only out one week. Oh, it's a tough one. Real tough. 
I'm I'm more conservative, so I'm going to say yeah. hold just because Keep that's hold. more more my style of play. But again, was I too conservative last week, and that's really hurt me now, possibly. So I'll say hold myself. Janice more of a potential. The thing with on. Neil is, I think he's he's the scariest non-own. I don't know about you, George, mm. but for me, Neil Neil can just he could be on ten, and then he could be on sixty at halftime. Oh, had him, Janice. Those ground ball gets yet. contested. Special. I could have had him. Could have had him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rub it in too much. But um... oh, that's grouse from you, Dr. That's awesome. What a drive by. We're all no, unlucky, unlucky, unlucky Janice. Neil, anyway, but you know, you game next year. You know, always game next year. He's always yeah. next year. <laughs> yeah, I don't I Neil's just too good at stoppage. Just on I'll level. just send it. I'll, I'm sending this trade. I'm just going. Um, if I can get Neil in any way, like I would get Neil. If you ever right. move, you get Neil over Sinclair. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying. All right, but Mark. He's going to get tagged, but these taggers, whatever for Neil, honestly. Bedford in three weeks. Bring it, please. Save us. Off, I hope he goes Save to Dunkley. Us. Real randomly just goes to Dunkley. <laughs> well, at least, all right, let's go McCluggy. There's McCluggy. no McCluggy. way that's no happening. No one gets affected by and... Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, Mark. Well, um, three to one there, mate. So listen to the three. Get Chalky in your side, mate. Uh. Next one, absolute legend. Shout out to the great Caddy who was on our potty last week. Caddy's looking at trading Fisher and Simkin to Manor and Sinclair. Oh. Will give me Humphreys, Dowling, and Manor as bench cover. Worth last using my last trades. two trades wow. or not? I'm going to say no for this one, boys. I don't know if you yeah. guys agree. Or I, if I was going to do it, I'd, I, I, I think Simkin's better than what he put out. And I think if I was going to do it, I'd do one trade. Fisher to somebody, but again, who can you afford? It's tough, but I'm not. It makes it seem so much better, though. It does, but I guess I guess I'm running with zero trade, so I mean, it's not too bad so far. So you can cop it if you want to. Oh, I think Simpkins got a really nice run coming up. He's got yeah, he does. Geelong, yeah, Westwood. Yeah, we obviously touched on that before, Geelong. so you know we've he's had all the peanut games. Gone. It's a long so Richmond should... West Coast towards said so, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so are we saying due to Simpkins run here, maybe to just keep the faith there, boys? I don't I don't know. Sinclair it's an upgrade it's two trades. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I'd almost go like I'd almost go Fisher. Is so Fisher's obviously his twenty third. Like you probably lose it, but I'd almost bank a bit of coin and go down to Maybe a mana, have some like a lot of cash in the bank for your last trade. Yeah, yeah. And maybe you can do something spicy in the finals and get like anyone you want. Maybe that's the only issue is if you bank all that money and then like a bond goes down, you'd yeah, be super that's, frustrated. That's that is the risk involved. There's always, there's always a risk. In that's anything, what I've got, that's, DR. That's so I've got the... 123K yeah. with one trade. So it's, Ooh, it's that okay. it's the yeah. leeway. But if a big gun goes down, it's like, who, who are you going to go up to, really? That's, yeah. So are we sort of in a grant here, a very hard decision that we're leaning towards not trading? I'd hold off, weapon? man. Yeah, I'd hold off. I'd, I'd Sinclair's going to outscore Simkin to the end of the year, though. He will. That's, it's, uh, and the bench cover is very good. I'd, I'd almost be tempted to pull it, but you're pulling it depends it. on the type of coach. <laughs> We've got to do something with Fisher and if – Takes two <laughs> trades. I don't, I don't love getting rid of Simkin, but I think yeah, if you got to use two trades to get rid of Fisher up, I'm, I'm okay yeah. with that because you can't have that. There you go, mate. There you have it. All right, Kata. All the best of luck, buddy. All right, turbo time, boys. We've gone way over time already. Here we go. We have. Uh, here's Brentos here. G'day, boys. Just want to say hi. Love We're the show. Keep the work. Cheers, mate. Mark, love you, brother. We'll, right, we'll catch up very, very soon, mate. mate for okay. a fair few cold ones, mate. Logan J. Hey, lads. Zero trades and own TDK. Ugh. Oh. So AFLW FBL prep for me. Also, George, what can you please of this? unban LJ from Discord? I don't <laughs> know what's going on here, George. What? What? Just... Some beef. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, he's, he's saying from run one rail owner no. to another. No. <laughs> so he's sympathizing you as well. <laughs> What I will Logan, say, Logan, what I will say, George, is that Al, Logan what did LJ been do, of, George? He's been one of the best. He's been one of our best supporters all year. So I don't know what Come he's on. done to you, George. Mate, what's but... he done to you? What's what happened? I'll be honest, in, man. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh... All right, yeah, hopefully LJ uh, 
something good. We put a good word in there, mate. Mate. Yeah, If you still have uh, um, LJ, it should be fine. I'm sure you a great man. I'll sort you out there. Hopefully, yeah. you've got rid of um, Rowley as well, Logues. Anyway, mate, all the best, buddy. <laughs> Our next one's from Maddie. G'day, Maddie. Four trades, 100k in the bank. Ben covering gone oh. with Jackson. Miller with Humphreys Dowling. Gorn should be back this week. Holding Miller again will be a real pod for finals. Yes. Thoughts on one trade of Revel to Manor to give me Dowling, Manor, Humphreys, Manor, oh. and Dowling as cover. I'm sorry, Matt. I'm just going to be real upfront with you here. I don't think Miller is a pod that you want to be having for finals. Owning him, he's like, I get I get if it's like a Sinclair or someone, but Miller, it's almost like, you don't want to go into a final with Miller as a pod. Let's be real. No, oh, I wouldn't. So you'd almost be, I'd almost be moving him on uh, with four trades, especially you're in a great position there. Yeah, moving Miller on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I would well. move him on a couple of weeks. Ago. Look, like look at that bench there. Like Dowling, Humphreys. If you can go Miller and Revel to a, I don't know, a, who doesn't he have? Maybe not Neil because it's expensive, but like. He almost uh, could, but he could almost go like one up, yeah, one down. Possibly, yeah. Like, he's yeah. got he's still got like, he's got the money in the bank. Money in the bank. If he went well. Revel to a loophole yeah. and then Miller up to Neil yeah. and had Dowling yeah. Humphreys cover and two yeah. trades left, come on, man. You yeah, the only the only thing DPP I would say the only thing that I would say is in doing so, he doesn't have an FC. Oh no, he doesn't have a, oh just no defensive cover. Because he can't get Humphreys if a Houston gets in. So I'd try to find a way to get Dawson into your forward line, Frazier into the midfield, and Humphreys into the defense. Yep. And then yep. do a yep. find a way to just upgrade Miller. Totally go that way, mate. Beautiful. All the best, Maddie. Next one's from Lee Haru. Probably butchered that. Sorry, mate. G'day, guys. Lairu. Lairu. name. Oh, Jack. I should have just thrown to you then, mate. <laughs> G'day, guys. Could use a little direction with where to go as my 23rd premium with Sexton heading out. Could easily go to Moore in the forward line, but falling mm. just short of Whitfield in defence. Thoughts? Thanks. Looking forward to the potty. I think Moore is a fine selection. Yep. George, yeah. I know he's been a great selection for you since you've brought him in, mate. Are you giving the thumbs up to trade in Dylan Moore here, mate? Yeah, been a pleasure to own most weeks yeah. anyway. But, yeah, just works so hard. Hawks are flying. I think he's good for 95, a bit of CBAs in there as well. I think he gave his CBAs to Watson on the weekend, or a few of them. I think he mentioned that, but yeah, he's uh, I think he's good for 95 minimum. Beautiful, or mate. Average. Yeah, so love, the, love, them, well. love them all, Pete. Well, there's a pretty good endorsement. And just on um, Dylan, I think I've said this before, but this bloke was on the scrap heap not long ago, it seemed like, and hasn't he just re energized no, himself? He's he just... probably their next captain, DR. He's a star. Nah. He's, he's a star. Vice this captain is, this today. Is... This is what I'm saying. I reckon it's vice captain day as well. Or co captains. They could go the co captain model, but I'm not sure how that works. I don't, I don't know, know what Sammy's like do. there. All right, we've got five more boys. Uh, not very good at super coach. Why is it pronounced Sherry and Xavier, but not Zeri and Xavier? <laughs> um, what? <laughs> anyone good with their literature here? Janet, do you know a good quote or two? Uh, uh, any, any response to that? I've got, I you don't got even the know. I don't even. I don't even know if Tristan Cherry's pronounced Cherry. It's just the way we've been going. going I think George, you're, a, you're a smart bloke, Cherry. George. Can you can you I'll elaborate on this one to make it <laughs> uh, more sense? No, I speak one language. Of... <laughs> no, I, I remember. I think he said oh. his name was Sherry. Is it okay? Um. Yeah. But doesn't apply to all, all the, names. Yeah, what about what about those that have the name X Savior, where they put the X and it's like X Savior, no, not Savior. I hate that. No, well, that, that's some, that upsets me. It, it's but funny. Up. Some names you pronounce it one, you, like you actually go there X Savior and Xavier. So I've had a, yeah. students with both that that go both, but uh, yeah, I, I cannot add much to this. Sorry, boys, <laughs> cannot add much. But uh, a very interesting question. Thank you very much, mate. Next one is from Kev Fan. G'day, Kev. Hey, Legends. Hey, you all. Hope you're all doing well. Cheers, brother. Got the goat, George. The goat. On. Hey, I didn't say it, George. I'm just reading this out, mate. Now, hey, George, I'm not the only one with this point of view. So Yes, that's right. A lot right. of people, humble. Lot of people uh, think humble very to highly get it. Uh, well, Maybe Kev's a goat because he's currently ranked 141 with a couple of <laughs> trades left. Are there any pod-type picks you guys would take a punt on for the last three to four weeks? Was thinking of getting Rankin in when he's back, or do I keep them for injuries? Uh, hard with that context. You need the you need to see the yeah. team there, Kevin. 
I'm okay, assuming the team's going just, pretty well. So let's just say yeah. put this in isolation. He's got two trades left. Are you if, if you can afford it in, in one trade, are you happy getting Rankin back? Are you worried about him you know being out? George, oh. I'll, I'll throw it to you being an Adelaide man. Yeah. Are you happy to trade him in the week that he's available <laughs> or are you gonna skip him, mate? Got concerns oh. there with him. Yeah, a lot of people are gonna be fielding a Luke Jackson at F six, who yeah. with Darcy, what is he like eighty average? I don't know. So to get rank in there, who I don't know, probably should do a hundred plus. I think that'll be a nice pod. Yep, I would definitely do that. If not, if you yeah. can get to Sinclair down back, that's another one I'd look at. But yeah, I like. I've Rankin. just had a look at his team, beautiful uh, boys. So big, top rank, high rank. Got Nankervis as R one. I think that's mm. that's an issue. No ruck covers. No Jackson. Oh, uh, Simkin, Steel, uh, Yo to come back in this week. Kerno. On the bench at F6. So I think Simkin Kerno F5, F6, and then Yo at D, D6, McKercher D7, M9. I think there's probably, I think the Nan, what would you do with Nankervis? I think Cherry, would you do Nankervis to Cherry? Because Cherry has the second easiest rack run coming home. He's got DeConning this week. He's a prop. He's going to be, be in Captain's Corner. Yeah. And you probably bank up. a bit of money doing that too. And then that might make the ranking move later on a bit easier. Yeah. Yeah, Does I think Gorn? no Gorn. So it's uh, no what was it? Oh, English All and right. Curvis. Gorn, yeah. Gorn v Sherry. Here we go. I'm sticking with Maxi. I'm sticking with my man Maxi. Sherry's I'm going. Go no, I'm going Max. I'm I'm going. Yeah, can't go past the king. Oh, so we're split here. I'll go Max. Uh, actually. <laughs> Oh, but I, you, Janice, you're on your own, mate. You're on your own, Jenny. Uh, I love oh, Cherry. I do really. Lo- I love Cherry. I think he's an animal. Oh, but you, can can't, you, you can't go. Can you, you can't trust? go past Max? Can you trust? Can you trust Max? Yeah, I trust him. Has, have we lost? Ma- have we lost trust in Max this season? Oh, I, I think he'll be right off a bit of a rest. He'll be very angry and come out. I did have for him it. captain for yeah, a 177 yeah. and then like a 180 this year. So I, I can't say I've lost too much trust in the big fella. So I, I can't enough. believe you're advocating for Sherry after he's just buggered your generational Ruckman. Two, you know, had, had on $20 his million dollar Ruckman. <laughs> landing on his ribs when he's uh, when he's on the ground and stuff. I can't believe you're advocating no, for this even, man. It wasn't even that, man. He, was, he bumped. He, okay, he got boys, rid of the ball and he bumped him, man. It was... Maybe we'll put the boxing gloves on after the pod. No, nah, <laughs> look, look, I, I said this something out well. at the end of the season. I love the way the way Cherry plays, and uh, I'm going off a of ruck run basis here. He's he's performed so well against the top rucks this season that if that's his flaw, and he yeah. has Sam DeConning this week, who has who gets a hit out 22 percent of the time, Cherry's going to have 70 hit outs this week. Uh, Richmond, whether Nank is back or not. West yep. Coast, easy matchup. Bulldogs, Tim English rarely wins the hit-out battle. Then you're talking about a good hit-out Ruckman that gets it at ground level as well in Cherry. And the Hawks, who's probably a mid matchup, but he hasn't gone below 82 all season. Only only three scores in the 90 as well. If you want if you want consistency, I think that's the thing with it's gonna be a dangerous antipod because but the thing is you don't own Gorn at the moment, so it's not like you're trading Gorn out to get Cherry. I think if you're looking at isolation, Cherry for the run home is probably better than a 32-year-old Max. Yeah, that's, I just go just back to the I thought. Think. I've always said that, like, the scariest yeah. antipod this year is probably Max Gorn. Yeah. I know that's yeah. probably thinking In, a little bit early when he was on more of a hot run. <laughs> um, but, yeah, look, e- either way, I think they're two good options anyway to uh, to be selecting yeah. from. Bad luck with that, the Nank selection there. Oh. Mate, next one, uh, Stevie Price. Hey, lads, thinking about going for a forward pod to replace the flopping fish as a 23rd to loop with Kerno. Thoughts on our oh, Tracy? Lisa's going to love this. She wants to start with Josh Tracy. Oh, I don't know what oh, you're Tracy. doing right this He's year. He's on fire at the moment, Josh Tracy. Far Draper. Around. Is that Sam? Oh, because he's a Draper. Ruck forward. He's a forward. Can we? Okay. Um, I. I don't know anything about how they. Uh, I, I know that Tree playing, territory. But... I wouldn't go near him with. Yeah. What about what about what about an, what about a super pot? I reckon George's going to like this one. Benny Keys. Oh, Keys. He yeah. didn't. He, someone oh. asked about him in the stock market. Day I Keys like went off. I, I love that man. I love him. I'll never hate him. <laughs> He's one of my exes from Brisbane. 
<laughs> Massive love for the keys. What, what do you think about keys here? George? One, just quickly, just quickly before George starts. 120, 93, 123, 158 is last four. He's an animal. Oh, my God. Didn't even realize that. He had me tearing oh, my yeah. hair out, so Dude, I can't be bothered. Rolf's not supposed to be super coach friendly. I think we've seen a drop off in the midfield. Like, Laird's dropped off. The kids are like getting like, they're not even getting 20 touches a game. Dawson's been down, so left a bit for keys. He got mid time. I think it was only because we ran out of legs against the Dons. Hmm. <sighs> I say this, I hate non super coach friendly roles. I've got more, who's I think 30% CBA mid most weeks. Um, uh, I had him back into last year, it was a disaster. Really. It was good for a while, but yeah, I, I, I still say no because I don't love the role. What about add those three, mate? What, what Keys, Tracy, Sam Draper? I'll find a couple of names as well to throw in that mix. This uh, well, is go. Is Draper, he's splitting with Goldie though, isn't he? Yeah, Draper's... Surely it spills. Even you can't advocate for Draper in this situation. Nah, I wouldn't go near Draper with a 10-foot pole. Yeah. I mean, yeah. no way. No, I'd probably go no Keys over those two. Yeah. I like Ke- I think Keys, is, he, he played really well, but I think Tracy on the run home to finals, Frio playing for a home qualifier... Yeah, that's what's up yeah. for grabs here. And I mean, he how many marks did he have in the it's first half? Forward. Like crazy, man. That's if Kerno Kern- goes he's a key forward, but he's a good key forward because it's like if Kerno goes bad, I think you could roll a dice of a Tracy yeah. and you're not gonna lose out. You're not gonna lose that many points because people are copping that Kerno score. Like score, mm. if Kerno goes really bad, I mean Tracy's in red hot form. I love the mongrel in him. He's such a mongrel. He's, he's like one so of those players man. defender. You just you'd hate to he's be, really you know, in that awkward position, just waiting for him to be breathing down your neck. And he hurts people. I know. I think he got suspended a couple of times in his early days for some undisciplined things for whacking blokes. But um, yeah, he, he's got the mongrel in him, and I really, really love that about him. Great at the contest. Always makes a contest. At least he'll bring the ball to ground if he doesn't mark it. So yeah, it's. It's such a tough position for those that want to trade our Fisher for a forward because the slim pickings there is or a backman. Just, it's bad. Both. He's at I, a really awkward price. And that's why, as yeah. Bill said, he got rid of Rao this week or the, or the week before. What do you, do? you wait yeah, too long and you're right. stuck. There's no options around the price. Yeah. Okay. How, how, about, how about one more? One more. Okay. 391K, probably the highlight of the weekend as a non Collingwood fan, Jack Ginnivan. 31 oh. touches, 137, 21 the previous week oh. for 90. The, the Hawks have Richmond North final two rounds. Oh, it it's, not a bad shout. Juicy, but... it's not a bad shout. I still like Tracy, personally. That's what my gut tells Over me. Over Keys? Yeah. So where, where does Keys yeah. rank in all this? Because Keys is in the same price as Fisher range. I don't know. I, I've, watched, I've watched Keys once this year and he played the game of his life. So it's kind of like, I don't know. And I guess Reed, maybe... He plays the maybe, game of his life against Carlton every year. George would know that because, I don't know, something with Ben Keys and playing, scoring four goals know. against us every single time. <laughs> he gets to the back of Saad all the time. <laughs> yeah. Every time. <laughs> it's tough. I'm going, I'm going Benny Keys one. Maybe I'll a little bit. Yeah, one. I'll go Keys oh, two. Alrighty. Keys one. Okay. Gentleman two. Tracy three. Okay. <laughs> well, if, if Tracy stadium. if Tracy goes off his head this next month or so, don't say I didn't, didn't tell you so. <laughs> <laughs> next All one, right. Steve Heavo. Hey lads, just a question on which pod F six has the best run for the last stretch of games. Assuming most have Caldwell, Jackson, Flanders, Heaney, Zorko. More. Thanks for the content. More. Dylan Moore. He spelled Dylan yeah. Moore wrong. I think I can't. Yeah. He spelt more wrong. No, yeah. No, he's right. not even Dylan a pod. Just, just, but it's like he's no. the, he's the safest pick of the lot. He's a bike again, isn't it? Clearly. Yep. And last one we've got here, boys, is from Burners. Hey, mate, got one trade left after the Dawson concussion. Thinking of trading him out to Sarong or Gould. I know it leaves me with zero trades left, but needs something. But I need to do something to get to the top 5K. If Jackson injured, then probably have to rethink. Love the content. Thanks, brother. Uh, Sarong or Goulton? So poor. I'm holding there. I'm no, holding I'm too. Um, it's a one weaker. Yeah. Yeah. I'm holding for sure. Yeah, if you did trade, you'd go. I'd go Sarong. If you but did, it, but I wouldn't because it, it's a 
you know, I think Dawson can come good. And I think there's is there bigger fish to fry in the side. He, he, he mm-hmm. might that trade might come in handy. I mean, I, I hated using my last trade, hated it because you know, he, he, he has a tie for the rest of the year, but when it was as bad as Rowley, you kind of like, what do you do? But Dawson's not that bad. I mean, yeah, he's worse as like 80 at the moment. Like, yeah, he had a shocking run earlier, but I don't yeah. know. Are you, are, you a, co- are you copping a donut? Just say, let's just say, there's no surely he's cover. Got cover. A donut. So you, you, you're trading over a donut, aren't you? Just in oh, case that's over a donut, yeah, 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 pink, yeah, okay. Everyone so, we're trading has... for a donut. You, you'd assume, wouldn't you, Janet? At least everyone should have at least a, at least a Brucey Rebel that you that you a get dowling, 15 points a out of You wouldn't have surely you wouldn't have three donuts on your mid bench if he's got Dowling mid-bench. or Humphreys to come on. I'm holding for sure, yeah, anyone, but even hopefully yeah. Brown comes back this week. Like, are you not going to play a bloke that laid 24 tackles? <laughs> not surely man. after their performance, Brown's got to come in for yeah. some as well. Um, he scored like 15 in five minutes. He like, came on really late against North and dominated did, for did like a tackle, tackle, like a run down tackle or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. Run down yeah, tackle, yeah. any clarky. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Smith this week. and boys, really wet conditions on Saturday night against GWS, so it should be a tackle fest. Perfect game for Brown to come back in. So, yeah, he'll like still be Brown. Subs, Bills. Don't get your hopes oh, up, mate. No, come on, <laughs> Melbourne. Goody will still make him the sub. Yeah, yeah you need to do something, Goody, because they're going. All right, boys, that bit. is it for the mailbag. Good work. All right, work, lads. All right, we uh, we make, we've, we've obviously made pretty good time, boys. So we may as well move into our captaincy corner with Janeth. Take us away, brother. Yeah, look, it's it's very slim pickings this week. I don't like a lot of the good captaincy options. Ugh. Um, and <laughs> the big part of it is if you look in the first three columns, there's Bear no dark bad green. News. So there's no there's no one thirty five average three round averages um in the last three games versus an opponent or at a venue. But I think there's there's four main standout options, and I'll I'll give them in this in this way. Actually, we'll, we'll call five. We'll call five. Tristan Cherry is number one. Um, these are in no particular order, but Sam DeConning uh, playing in really good form. I think Cherry is going to be a safe one thirty. I'd say like one twenty safe, safe but he's got yeah. one thirty plus upside to him that this week. Safe. So I think he's a he's a really good pick. Locking Neal should get off the chain. Gold Coast don't tag. Dim has never tagged. Um, we saw game. last time what um, Gold Coast, what happened when Brisbane played Gold Coast. Do you remember? I think Dunks, Neal, and Zorko went 150 plus. Or it was, I know that Neal and, Neil and Dunks. This was close to the downfall of Rao, wasn't it? Because I reckon Dunkley gave him a yes, real hard Dunkley, time. Dunkley tagged Rao in that game. That's right. And I reckon that yeah. was one of Rao's first really or if not his first really bad score of the year and i reckon that sort of sent him off in a bit of a different direction yeah. unfortunately for for spilsy and george but yeah. yeah neil that's number two merits number three I, I really like them i really like the intangible side to this is that Essen have been hammered in the media and all this talk about culture and whatnot this is a game where i think if Essendon are to show their true finals contender, Merritt will have to stand up and he probably back. won't get tagged. Look, if they no, put Sack Jones on him or Jack Steele on him, Sack it, should Jones. Be, it should be an easy tag for him. Mate, to Merritt will run him ragged. Merritt will absolutely that's, that's drive him up. You watch. The Sack other two Jones. matchups I really yeah. like is is Sarong against West Coast. This is probably the safest um, one. West Coast haven't necessarily been tagging. Um, they did put Jinbi to... I think Merritt a couple of weeks ago and Sheed, but like Sheed's not in the side. Jinby's playing halfback now under the new coach. Strong should towel up. And I really like the fact that it's at Optus as well. He, he We saw the 140 against Melbourne and the matchup, matchup data's there. And probably the, the last one, which funny enough, I think Richmond have tightened up a fair bit in terms of inside mids, but Nick Dacos, another team that's been yeah. hammered in the media for all the wrong reasons. Um, uh, Collingwood, Dacos, we, I think uh, there was a, there was something that came out. He went after the game. He went to talk to Luke Bruce and asked him, so so how do you back up after a premiership? Obviously with three Pete, he, he wanted to know how what what steps to take to remove Good that complacency. But I think he that's that's that future captain potential right there in Dacos, um, and he's he's going to bounce back. I'll start us off, boys. 
I'm thinking I'm thinking Merit into Sarong. Take 120. It's honestly, 119, 118, yeah, take both hands. Big yeah. You're okay. going Merit over Chalk, are you? Yeah, I think so, I was so, leaning Chalky. Yeah, I, I love the them both. Point. You know what both I'd love to do? You know what I'd well? love to do? You know what I'd love to do, boys? I'd love to VC Neil for Merit, but we can't because they both play <laughs> together at 435. <laughs> That's a hard <laughs> choice. Come on. Come on. Oh, do you know what? I don't mind Harry yeah. Sheasel either against Geelong, yeah. to be quite honest. Yeah, don't mind I, it. I think he's... He's, he's pretty safe. If you look at what he's been scoring compared to your Sarongs of, of late takeout last week, or even last week, very comparable, 138-140 odd. Oh, I don't mind Harry Shields. And the other bloke I, I said he's not on this list as well is Mr. Tun Run himself, Sam Flanders. Sam Flanders. Do we just yeah. use him as a, as a really, the really safe The backup? reason why I didn't include him is this is, I think this is, if he's going to lose this Tun Run, it's going to be this week. Who are they? Oh, Brisbane. us, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Jared Berry will probably go to Anderson, you would think. Probably. Yes. Yeah. If he tags, yeah. it just makes yeah. sense because bigger body look, can run and, with him. Anderson at Anderson at people for stadium is next level. Well, he's Genuine not going to be around, I can there. tell you that. But right as soon now. as he's tagged, that his efficiency drops right away. I think that's one of the ways that you can really make up for those uh key defensive deficiencies, DIs, making sure the ball doesn't come in quick. And the way to stop that is stop it at the source. Yep. like it, mate. I'm, I'm thinking myself, realistically, probably Chockey into Sarong or Dacos. Looking at Dacos yeah. versus Richmond, he's, I, I think he's almost due for a really big one. We he's saw that due. run for about five, six weeks. <laughs> where it was those 140s, 150s. We haven't seen that lately. And he's too good of a player not to have a really good run. And I reckon he'll be really up and about for this. I think that a Brownlow may be out of his reach this year, but who knows if he has a really, really big last five weeks and Collingwood can find some form, he could be in contention there. So, yeah, Chalky, I'll, I'll probably say Dacos at this stage. I'm going to take a punt on a, on a bit of a ceiling game against Richmond. Spilsy, what are you thinking, mate? Yeah, probably one of Neil or Merritt into Sarong, I think. Real, yeah. like, boring, but I don't know what else to do. I don't want to take the punt on anyone that's unproven. I just want to back in or someone that's going to, re- like, looking to respond this week. And, yeah, it's a tough week. I don't know. It's, it's, it and avoid hard. avoid the Bulldog-Sydney game. That's going to be a bloodbath. Like, yeah. it's, going to be, it's going to be the game that you guys had, Sydney-Brisbane, um, mm. where... It's going to be no impossible one. to figure out who's going to go big in that game. Geez, they can go on a quick run, Sydney. Like yeah. that, that start to that second quarter, they yeah. made us look silly. So second rate. Um, yep. Yeah, they're a bloody solid team. George, George what do you think, you mate? Captain, mate? Uh, Max Gorn in the wet off a two week break is locked for me. Like oh, it. I like um, it. I was just looking at how he went against Briggs. He split with Grundy, but did have eight clearances on Briggs last year. It might have been a bit on the backup ruck, but it was Briggs solo versus Gorn Grundy. So I don't mind that. Uh, um, that's a good point, man. And then it would either be, it. yeah, she's a winter Gorn or Gorn into Dacos as a fallback. But I don't really trust Dacos at the moment. I do feel like Dacos is due for a, for a big one. Uh, I'll go at this stage, she's a winter Gorn. You don't like Sarong, right. George, or is it you prefer the other options a bit better? Um, West Coast plays at the same time as Gorn. True. So yeah, no, I think Sarong's yeah. a great option, but I'd take Gorn for ceiling. Your hearts with Gorn, you can't obviously do them both. Yeah. So yeah, that's a. You, yeah, I'd Gorn probably rather captain. Good, I'd rather though. captain Gorn. I think because I, I like Dacos has been pretty solid every week. But that stealing has been non-existent for a long time, and you know, you know, it's Richmond. You expect him to carve them yeah. up, but I don't know. I'd, I feel like I'd probably rather go on as a captaincy option to see if one of these Neil or Merritt types responds, and then I don't mind that. Either. That's a good shout if he does come it's back. Really but... harsh, but as a, as a whole, as we yeah, all as we all held Gorn here, nothing would be more satisfying than him coming and just smashing out a massive oh, one, even 100%. if you don't have him as a VC. Would be just mint. holding faith with him. Would be absolutely hundred percent. Yeah, uh, we we deserve it. Let's be honest, boys. We deserve it for sticking oh, back to the big name. Come on, oh, mate. And yeah. uh, boys, Spilsy, we're, we're a bit of a blank canvas here. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, no trades. So, 
What, 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 yeah. but Spills, what are you contemplating, mate? Oh, yeah, not I'm much. Sorry, mate. Not, not yeah, much, time. mate. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna have a holiday for the rest of the season. And you know whatever. what, Dia? We should have just put a picture of Adam Trelaw right there. <laughs> yeah. George, this Adam is what I got to deal with every week. <laughs> I, they, these two gang up on me because of this love Spilsy, affair we got. You with. were gonna bring in Adam Trelaw, and he did his calf in the pregame. George, mate, he's a freak. Like, How do you play on the weekend, up. boys? What do we reckon? <laughs> oh, Come on. Okay. No, he's all right. I love him. He's a gun. <laughs> You're a glutton for punishment going near this bloke, mate, with your last grade. I'm telling you. Right? Yeah, bring, you in, bring, in, Ro- bring in Rosie, who has had a hammy, and he's a test for this week. Mm. He's done a hit. He's, he's okay. got a hit he's point. Okay. He's okay, <laughs> yeah, buggy for cursed him, Spills. Well, look, I've got a couple of trades up my sleeve. Um, but at this stage, I'm probably just going to stick fat. Um, I'm assuming that, you know, the Yo's and the Gorns and Doggers and that will be right. Um, so pretty much just going to hold fat for now. Janeth, you plan on just keeping yours for a rainy day, mate? Yep. Yeah, I've got one and got the money. But yeah, hopefully. Can keep it for rainy day. I really need a bounce back game from Simpkin, though. I think that's Don't that's the all. weakest link at the moment. Um, so yeah. hopefully he can bounce back, mate. Sure. And George, and, you and have run out back. of trade as well, but you've got Matt Rowell out of your side, mate. Which uh, <laughs> maybe, we maybe can't complain. Must, must We're be not going to complain about. Uh-huh. I'll take three weeks of Rosie and three donuts over five weeks of Rowell. <laughs> that's <laughs> a great way. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That is so honest, true. Yeah, that's so true. Eh? That's a good point. Frust, most frustrating Iron Supercoach history. I can't remember watching a player so consistently oh. and just tearing my hair out week in, week out. What a, what a peanut. But anyway. What a peanut. <laughs> what a peanut. Sorry, Rail, if you're watching, but. Peanut Laddams. Yeah. Mm, oh, up there. no one's as much a peanut as that bloke, mate. Let me tell you. Oh, no, good stuff, boys. That was a. That was a good podcast. I was always going to go a little bit longer with with the great man on, and how awesome was it to get George on the podcast too? We've been meaning to get more guests on this year, and uh, this is a this is a pretty big one. So, um, before we wrap this one up, boys, um, George, thank you very much for for jumping on, and um, yeah, we love you, mate. We always tune your YouTube channel and see how you guys are going. Tune to the Fancy Take TV podcast quite regularly. So, hope you're doing yes, really well and. Yeah, we yeah, really appreciate you coming on. No, pleasure. You boys give me plenty of love every time. So thanks a lot, boys. Um, yeah. I think you guys are probably best podcast out there at the moment. So oh, honest to be on. Love your work. Oh, that's big yeah, you don't have to say you. that, George. From being way too kind there. Means, that means a lot. Yeah. George, no, I think you guys like definitely gone up a level this year. So it's been really good. No, no, much appreciated, appreciate mate. Appreciate and obviously, uh, I know that all three of us, mate, listen in absolutely every week, mate, to uh, all of your videos, uh, particularly the podcast as well with uh, mm. the great JD and NL as well, the, the best trio, I think, out there. We'll, uh, we'll, we're happy to be second after you blokes, I think, mate, because uh, you are really the pioneer, mate. You must be close to, what, 7,000 subscribers now on YouTube, are you, mate? You must be getting close to the milestone. Oh, this time of year I go backwards in, in subscribers. People don't want to look at super coach. <laughs> Maybe next year, but I think uh six point nine K, I think. Um oh, beautiful. Uh, look at you two heavyweights. Oh man, I think the RU overtake me eventually. I had to, this, I had to this, hang this them up because I'm like I just, the reason I hung them up, I was like, I just can't compete with the with the two absolute goats of super coach content. And they are because they attract the viewers <laughs> and everyone tunes in week in, week out for yeah, that's just you know so what they um, I'm I'm like I'm like that every I'm like that um you know how they always have the the um, the, the athletes and stuff on a podcast and have the, just the random that's coming from from nowhere and just like the host, <laughs> from just the host. Yeah, they got like, like they got the host, a little bit more credit <laughs> the than that, mate. a little bit more credit <laughs> like three time <laughs> premiership player and then the other one's got like a thousand plus goals and then like two hundred games caps and then the other one's just host just host. Or, yeah, oh, I'm like, the bloody man. The old fella, mate. <laughs> the old fella, mate. <laughs> Jano. <laughs> yeah, legit. <laughs> <you? laughs> well, we know that Jano's going to get his spot on first crack there. <laughs> oh, we need, yeah. yeah. With, with the boys. You still haven't put the application in, Spills. I'm, I'm disappointed in you. Yeah, yeah, come on, um, Spills. I, 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 need to, I need to get onto that because, um, yeah, I think it'd be great company. Bring a bit of Supercoach to first crack, too. But, um, totally. Boys, I think we'll just leave it here. We've 
So, yeah, it's ticked over two hours now. So another big podcast, but we love it. We love it on a Tuesday night. It doesn't get better. One of my favorite times of the week. So, um, yeah, thank you to George for coming on. And, and thank you to my other two brothers for making the podcast great and everyone and the community for tuning in. And we hope you're enjoying the episode and the season so far. And and make sure you get yourself some merch because it is selling hot. And, uh, yeah, uh, again, thank you to AFL Doodles for the design. And, um Boys, I think we'll just wrap this one up here. Good on you, lads. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Cheers, George, for coming on. See you next week. See you, boys. Cheers. See you, legends.